What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Pass the Barb. I'm your host, Ryan Pinkala, and uh, we're coming to you with a brand new episode today. And before we get into this, I just want to thank everybody that's been tuning in. Uh, we've been growing a ton lately, and it's been going really, really great. Sweet to see everybody out there checking this out, especially on social media, hitting us with new ideas. It's been super great. So if you're listening to this now, if you could rate and subscribe to this podcast and uh, share it around to your friends, let's just keep this thing going, take this thing to the moon, see where it goes. But joining me this evening, I got uh, my boy Sam Sobey coming to you right here. Howdy, 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 howdy. Yeah, and just like Ryan said, thank you so much for everybody, and new listeners, old listeners. Um, I'm pretty new to kind of join this podcast myself, but the special guests we have coming and the different segments we're talking about doing in the future, it's it's going to be good. So if you're brand new, stick around, and if you're an oldie but a goodie, stick around too. And our boy, Cody Honor. Make an appearance. It's been <laughs> what feels like a lifetime since I've been talking to you all. Um I'm sure I'll have some more stupid sayings and pathetic stories for you to listen to and bear through uh, on Spotify or YouTube. YouTube, I use my hands a lot, so you can see the whole picture that I'm trying to orchestrate for you. Um, but we appreciate everybody listening. Thank you. Welcome back. Settle up. Strap in. Yeah. And, and let, me say, Ryan. let me wow. say one point here, wow. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, is this the first podcast that Bart hasn't been a part of? And, and us three are we, spearheading this take we've had we've had we've had some other ones uh okay. that he wasn't here for um but i think he was he wanted to be at this one yeah so this is probably the first one that he's he's pissed about not being at I would say. <laughs> okay and, and and a side note it was just adam's 30th birthday we'll, we'll do a little round round of applause yeah happy, yeah, birthday. Yeah, happy, yeah, birthday. happy birthday party boy yeah, yeah. let's go yeah. Yeah. Hey, party boy so feel free to uh jump in those dms because he's old now yeah mm -hmm. he is old <laughs> Shut up, Brian. Shut up, Brian. <laughs> Wasn't your birthday. Hmm? <laughs> you already had yours. Yeah. It's okay. Spent it's okay. it alone crying in my room. <laughs> <laughs> that seems reasonable. I think it's, it's not a bad birthday. I felt, uh, yeah, it was. I mean, good. what else are you supposed to do? Were you yeah. holding yourself or was it more of a fetal position? You'd say? It, it was, it was more like my, my most firm pillow mm, between yeah. the legs and just memory foam. Uh, no, unfortunately not. I'm I'm mm -hmm. still rocking that college uh, yellow pillow oh, that we had. You know, rule stainer. Nice. Ooh, yep. Mm -hmm. We don't need a pillow cover for that. That's and if you'd like to have your pillow game, this brings us right to our first ad read. My pillow. Brought <laughs> right. It's a local Minnesota company. I used to weed whack for them uh, Monday through Friday, and it was really it's an incredible company. My pillow is brought to you by Pass the Barb. Thank you, Sam. There you have it. There you have it. <laughs> we're we're doing big things. We're, I mean, we really are. Use the promo code Adam Bartusek. All right. <laughs> promo code birthday fetal position. B I R T H D A Y fetal position. Uh, done deal. It's a done deal. It really is. Should we jump? Should we jump into the current events? What's yeah? Happening? Let's, let's now, now, Adam's thirtieth birthday. I would say that kind of leads us right into it. It does, and I I would ask how the party was, but none of us were there, so. Uh, Sam, what do you got going on? What have you been doing? Oh man, I've been just freaking, I've been bassing. I've been bassing and fishing and filming a lot. It's been super busy. Been doing a lot of cool stuff with Rappel and stuff like that. I've been doing some kind of behind the scenes documentary stuff, kind of with the Crush City Plastics. But other than that, just been, I've been trying to get caught up on editing and a lot of different stuff. July is always wicked busy, I think, for everybody. Dude, I don't, cause you kind of, you like called in last time, but it, that iCast deal, sounded like it was pretty wicked eh iCast was it was cool it's i i think i learned a lot more about iCast just because i guess i'd been there one time before but i always just kind of thought it's just kind of this lame show that the public can't go to it's just media and stuff like that and i, and I still kind of you know see it as that a little bit obviously yeah. if you're releasing a new product that's a pretty sweet deal and it's a a good place to do it but walking around there i like I like really this time I was there identified the two different people or I guess maybe the, the two different subspecies of people that are at ICAST. There's, <laughs> okay. there's, there's idiots like me that are there that are just greasy fishermen and, and whether, you know, you're a, a low level person or a designer or work for a company or you're a, a fishing pro you're there. And then there's people that are wearing like suit and ties. Yeah. And this is like big dudes and yes. they all, Please meet up with the other dudes. Super. I never recognize them. You don't know their names. And these guys go into these offices and they're like, you know, 
doing big million dollar meetings. You know, you want your shit done in my factory over in China. You want it done here. We're doing this. We're buying half the business. And like, yes. so there's all of us just kind of degenerates walking around acting like we're a part of ICAST. And then there's like <laughs> the actual business. The, the parents yeah. are speaking here. <laughs> yes. Like I walked into one office room and there was like, you know, all these Asian people and all these other people in suits. <laughs> and, and they gave me a look like, get out. And I yeah. freaking shut it so quick. And I was like, <laughs> So that was, that I, was, was kind of I wasn't part. meant to see that. Yeah, I was yeah. I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed. I get it. My name's Sam. I like the Chapo. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Get on the floor. Look pretty. <laughs> what the hell is a Chapo? The men are speaking. Oh my Sir, God. it's our, our number one selling bait. Dude, and it we sell baits. Like a massive trade show. Yeah, it's it's like huge. I didn't realize how big that thing was. It is cool because there is like all different sides of like the sport fishing industry there. So there's dudes from freaking the saltwater side, which is a crazy industry, like in itself, like it's so big and giant and massive. And like, I just think if you're from Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Midwest, like I just, you forget like how much is actually out there as far as I guess this industry. And I just think of always like bass or, or walleye right. or muskie. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like, you know, you, we're you making didn't... saltwater motors. We're making right. this, like these are, these boats cost more than anything you will have ever acquired in your whole entire lifetime's <laughs> right. four. Yeah. And then we're going to have a conversation and you should go back to wherever you came from. And yeah. I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> okay. I just didn't know. <laughs> what does that do? <laughs> <laughs> and then you just see all these different inventions. I don't know. You just see like crazy stuff, even from like a, a garment or all these different things of like, you know, their saltwater side stuff. And you're just like, mm -hmm. dude, that's not even, you know, that's not side imaging or forward facing sonar. This is like some crazy offshore weather reader that you just, I don't know. It's gnarly. So it was cool overall though. That's how was the, it sounded like there were some good parties though. Eh? I mean, after, it was that big of a show. It's gotta be nuts. It is that the after parties are definitely probably the best part. I would say just because like, <laughs> yeah. you know, you, you meet up with, so many different people you might only see once or twice every couple of years. And like, right. everybody always finds the same bar, the same after party to hang out at. And it's just, well, and it's in Florida. It's not like yeah. going to the ice show where you're like stomping around downtown. Like no. here. <laughs> I think, I think if I was there two days, I think I spent six hours in the hotel room. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Not lying. And I think, I, yes, it was, it was, I went home, <laughs> I went home and I ordered water on the plane and that was it. <laughs> and I said, keep it coming. One gallon of water, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah, but it was freaking incredible. <laughs> That's sick, dude. That looked like a blast. And you'd been doing anything else other than fishing? Just filming, filming and honestly also doing like different filming for like winter stuff, whether that be Vexlar or different stuff like that, which is odd. Like you said, we're kind of dealing more with summer, but like, yeah. I'm like filming their commercials and doing stuff like that for like the oh, winter time. Oh, and boys just mm -hmm. over here working. Yeah, I know. We're trying to like, we're trying to set up this shoot now inside like a permanent ice shack to like, which if you don't Shut have up. an AC unit in there, how hot would it be? A oh hundred? And you're wearing like bibs oh. and stuff. And we're doing bibs and like, oh. and I'm doing these photos and different stuff. And like, it was, it's hot. So it's, that's, that's my other People are event. just sweating. Down I can't wait to see that finished. And then I'm going to like, know that that's when you did it. <laughs> that was shot in the summer. <laughs> how about you, Ryan? Oh. What's current events going on with you? Dude, I same kind of deal. I've been fishing quite a bit, actually, which has been really good. I mean, obviously, I've been working, which sucks, but I uh, just did like a three-day trip over to Wisconsin, just straight musky fishing, and I really, yeah. it was like needed, really needed. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, dude, it was sick, though, because I, like, when you just go over there for a couple of days, like, Connor, you know, you do these all the time, just like burn up burn over there like fish your brains out like barely sleep do it again do it again yeah and then, and then you're just, done and then you're done and legit dude i drove up so i drove up there on friday night and i just drove straight to a boat launch crashed my truck for like an hour and then like put in yep. like it was still like dark and i'm like All right, i'm just gonna like go out and whatever and it was like glass calm like this lake wasn't that big just kind of idled out i fished like two spots and I had a, I had one up like right away, which I was like, well, that's that's sick, like that's good way sweet. to start, you know? Yeah. And like I, it was sick. It was like really hot. Had it in a figure eight. Like uh, went underneath the bow, did a couple more like turns, and it just came out. And I was throwing a swim bait, and it cut it in half 
in the figure. <laughs> I got no, like, so I was like, fuck, like that was my shot, like day one, first morning. And, uh, and then I, I was like, you know what? And I was, I was posting some stuff on Instagram too. Cause I was going to like try to like document the day or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so that happened. I'm like, good start, good start. And then, so I come back on that fish, like probably 20 minutes later and it eats, a, it eats again. Don't hook it. <laughs> and then spot and I, I put on another swim bait and it just demolished it. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. And it was like a, one of the, like a big hollow body, like, you know, on Shadzilla type deal. Yeah. The, the small, the Shadzilla juniors yep. out. So I, and I was running out, I only had a couple of the like fire tiger, like perch ones. So I, I, I had a bigger, the shit, the regular one with like, it's got more hooks on it and shit. And it's a little bit bigger. And I was like, you know what, watch this. And I put that on, waited like an hour and I went back on the same fish and I fished the spot a little deeper. I'm like, what are the odds? Right. Yeah. I fished it for five casts and I had the fish, like it was, I was reeling it pretty high. It was like a high spot fish came off i could see it like 50 feet out on the cast right on the bait and i was like burning it in it came right into the figure eight followed like three full figure eights and then i finally hook it it's so and it, it was unreal and the water's really really <laughs> clear dude i was like freaking out my adrenaline was like max set the hook on it and it's just like thrashing like yeah. crazy and i'm trying to like let some line out you know i like, click the thumb bar down finally get a little bit of line out and i'm like i'm alone too so i like i'm trying to like you know i got the net now in one hand i got singing the fish is just going ballistic and i tried to net it and it took off and i hooked it on the outside of the bag on the net which i was like (laughs) fantastic could not be going better right now and so i like threw i threw the rod down because i was like i didn't need like two hands for this so now the fish is outside the bag i don't even i'm not even holding the rod and i uh it's disgusting. I kind of blacked out, but the fish ended up in the net. <laughs> I, <laughs> Third time's the charm. Dude, I, it was I, crazy. It was I was literally losing awesome. my goddamn mind. And there's like two old guys in like a bass tracker, like just like sitting in their seats, like flipping down the shoreline, like right in front of me. And I'm like losing my goddamn <laughs> mind, dude. And they're like well, watching calm, this peaceful this morning in, in <laughs> Northern Northern Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. And then it was funny, and I finally got it in the boat, dude. And like so the, the bait was so twisted up in the net, like I couldn't even put the fish like in the net <laughs> now. Cause it's like, so I like what I, I, whatever. So I put it in my live well, I like put water and it was all good or whatever. So I could like <laughs> revive the fish in there, but literally I'm like effing with all of that business. And these guys, so these guys in the boat are maybe like 50 yards away and they watch this entire thing. Right. So finally I like, I put the fish in the live well and I just like sit down and I'm like, Jesus, that was crazy. And the guy, yes. the two dudes just like stand up and like sit in their boat and just just drive away. <laughs> they were like, yeah, all right, we're good. <laughs> that, that had to have been kind of a, like a, a monumental oh, trip, though, Ryan, because this is your first trip in your new chariot. This is your first yeah. This trip was the in, in yeah. Your boat. Th- this was the first, just like uh, like solo musky rip in the new rig. Yeah, I t- I've taken a few other places, but this was the first one, and this was like the first morning I took it up. So I was like, that was sick. That's sweet. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, we fished uh, a couple more days, and we end up uh, we caught four, um, lost one, really nice one, another fit like it's crazy, like very few like falls, like every fish we contacted pretty much eight, which was yeah. sick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, no, like mega giants, but the one was like forty five that you know, and um, yeah, just a solid trip. I think that we're getting to that time of year where they just start to bite. You know how that like going yeah. into the early part of fall it gets really good but that was uh that was sick and i'm still i'm still trying to get my boat all set up i've been buying stuff like crazy and uh, i got waldron coming over to help me <clears throat> wire everything up Sweet. or like rewiring everything getting it dialed and then i'll probably be trying to do at least some fishing this fall i got a lot of hunting stuff coming up but uh i really want to come down by you sam do a little musky fishing and Dude, i got a please. couple other lakes i want to hit for sure so I don't know. I I've been having fun with the boat and I think, I think I talked about this last time, but I think I'm going to, all the stuff we're doing to it and everything, I'm going to try to like document it in some way. Yeah. yeah. People are like into that stuff, dude. I don't very, know. Like, I've very seen a couple of things down and everyone's done really well with it. So I'm like, I kind of want to like put that out there. Plus it's kind of a sick boat and it's going to be even, it's going to be really, really sick when it's done. <laughs> that's gonna be super sick do you, know, sweet. do you know the model he has cody have, like have you seen pictures of it i think i've seen uh well your buddy one has picture. one yeah they're awesome boats yeah awesome to fish out of 
like he i mean he used it for the bay all the time and it was perfect for that like not you know seven footers like you're probably not going to go out fun fishing in that anyway but right. like it can handle the bay no problem it's great for northern wisconsin basically any body of water and the platform for fishing out of is awesome it was it's so dead it's a great boat yeah, it's good. And I, you don't see, like, I know that there's a bunch of them out there, but I, you don't see them around too much. No, no. Cause yeah, it seems like, and you don't see them being sold very often because no. they go so fast. They do. Cause your buddy, I think either sold or was selling his like two yep. years ago, maybe. Yep. Cause I, I was still looking at that time and I've like hit him up about it and it was already like not for sale anymore. Or yeah. Something. I don't know. Yeah. Gonna... He's, he said it went like within a couple of days. Yeah. It was, it was gone. Not. Yep. Yeah, and they don't they don't like go down in price like no 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 <laughs> no not at all. no they're always the same. Yeah, no, it's like twenty some years old doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Same price. It's weird. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But though, yeah, those huh. those boats are sick. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to like maybe like do some sort of like video something of like updating it and doing the stuff because I think it'll be cool to like look back at it in a couple of years once it's got more and more stuff dialed in. Yeah, that so, would be sweet. Yeah, that would so, be sweet. Yeah, but that's that's uh that's the fishing stuff. But I did do another trip recently oh. that was pretty interesting. Oh, so we did like a <laughs> did like this like family trip recently. Okay, which like most of the time if I go somewhere, it's either to fish or like hunt or like do something. Right. Mm -hmm. This yeah. was not that. This was literally <laughs> just like a, like just hang out, drink, like whatever kind yeah. of deal. So <laughs> I went with my family and like some of my relatives or whatever to so two rivers wisconsin or rivers you yeah you know where that's yes. at Sam? yeah oh yeah okay so went there and it was like we like rented a house there right and it was just supposed to be like a party weekend which it was okay but they had this event going on there called snow fest you familiar yeah. with this what no this was like two weeks ago <laughs> okay so I, I had never heard of it either till we like got there and people were asking us like, oh, you guys going to Snowfest? And we're like, oh, what? No. Like when? <laughs> like this is literally two weeks ago. And I'm like, so, so they have like a big town. Uh, there's, I don't know. So I'm sure somebody's been to it before, but like the, uh, this town, I don't know when it started, but it sounded like back in the day kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, they had a big pile of snow, like in their downtown, like park or whatever. And that, whatever that date in July was, was when it finally melted. So they decided to like have a festival because of that. So it's the same weekend every year they have snow fest. And oh it's like, <laughs> and it's it, like, it's like <laughs> only in Trivers would they have snow fest <laughs> in, in, in late July. In July. <laughs> what are you celebrating? The snow pile melted. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, yeah, event. this should be a long-standing event for sure. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, whatever. So we kind of we we partook in some of the snow fest festivities. But dude, this this whole town is just like a straight block. We so there was a parade, which I did go to the snow fest parade. And essentially it's just a regular parade, but at the end, so they have <laughs> you know how like a lot of like Thanksgiving parades they have like Santa at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was like that, but it was <laughs> like some strung out dude dressed in a Santa <laughs> costume with like a another dude dressed in like a polar bear thing. Incredible. And they just had a cooler full of slush and they were just packing ice balls and just ruining people on the side of the road. <laughs> That's actually pretty sick. <laughs> like, you know, because you know, like when it, because they had, it probably was snow at one time, but you know, when you like pack a slush ball and yeah, it's, it's like yeah. ice. The guy was standing on the back, just working mm. these balls and then just decimating children on the side. Of the <laughs> <laughs> Think about what you just said back one more time. <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> <laughs> you heard me. Snowfest 2023. <laughs> oh That's God. incredible. But yeah, dude, it was it was pretty fun. And they had like they had some concerts and stuff that was just like the people watching was truly incredible. Oh, I'm sure it had to be a top to five see. of my life. <laughs> really, I mean, it was just something. Two else Rivers, there. Wisconsin, strung out Santa's just freaking <laughs> pelting children. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it was. It was something to see for sure, but no, it was a good time. Yeah, yeah it was, 
definitely not like a normal weekend rip. I'll tell you that it was it was diff- it was a different deal, but I had a good time. It was good. <laughs> All right, Honor, how about you? Current events, and and I know you've been working your ass off, but I want you to go into a story about some of your coworkers and what they've been up to because we received some phenomenal Snapchats from you. And, oh, and we, we will will be posting this on social media. Oh man, it you know I. I really just do not like this job, but there are some, like you're saying, Ryan, some amazing moments of people watching out there. I mean, you get all walks of life coming on a job site. You don't know what they did last night, but I know they didn't sleep. I know they didn't sleep. That's for damn sure. Oh God! You got from our little apprentices to the other tradesmen's to, I mean, there's Mexicans on every job site. I don't, most of them are drywallers. Um, you know, whether they speak English or not, they're always hilarious. But far and away, the best are <laughs> the college kids, the yeah. summer help. You can see in their bright cherry faces when someone, you know, oh, my my uncle is the general contractor here. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. I'm like, not here. You he won't be not here. He won't be. Mm-mm. You think that now? <laughs> you he's fun that. at dinner he's yeah, fun yeah. at dinner yeah thanksgiving yeah, not here. sick but not not here. here you're gonna find out how true truly big of an alcoholic your uncle is he's gonna be pissed <laughs> <laughs> my favorite is seeing their bright faces walk in and they're just so fresh and new they're like yeah you're gonna need a hard hat you're gonna need a hard hat and they put on this like shiny br- bright hard hat and by the end of the week i swear they're slamming monsters and just choking down choking down darts at lunch lunch <laughs> break 15 minutes after break another 15 minutes after that i mean they'll go through you know carton easily in a day by i'd say the first month you realize pretty quickly you know when they say oh you don't need college stay as long as you can <laughs> for the love of god cherish for the it. love of god otherwise this is your life it's all downhill from here, it's, boys. It's all down from downhill from here. Yeah, you're uh, you're in the you're in the trenches now, son. <laughs> Settle up. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Like, dude, there's so many. I mean, there's so many moments during the day where I'm like, oh. can you oh ma- god, can you imagine no. if somebody made like a sitcom, almost like I, an office version of like. The construction site, like instead of the thought this so many times of strapping a GoPro to my hard hat. My God, that was so many times. I mean, the amount of, you know, I know OSHA's out there, whatever, and everybody preaches safety, 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 safety. (laughs) Mm. Mm. Still waiting for those rules to be uh, enforced here. I mean, you watch guys on twelve foot extension ladders. One guy's holding it on his knees up on a like. 40 feet of scaffolding can you get it can you get it i'm losing my grip i'm losing my grip nope one second some guys up there just shaking holding on for dear life so the guy doesn't fall off the ladder i mean it's it's classy it's comical whatever you know you put your body on the line to finish the job like right now i'm working at a we're really uh you know ramping up the stevens point area we uh currently are building a big lots a five below in a Ross discount clothing store. Really? really? Adding value to the society of Stevens Point. You're really doing it to him. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Making, yeah, we're making the dream work. We're we're making the world go round every, <laughs> uh, I mean, when's the last time you've been to a big lot? No, I can't. I, maybe never. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe not. That's possible. That was the, that really? was the answer. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that was the answer. So what, what's, I mean, I, so, I, I mean, like, I work on some construction stuff, but not, like, these type. Like, this is, like, industrial shit. Industrial yeah. commercial, and yep. So, what I mean, you're – the guys you work with are primarily electricians, but, like, yep. who's the bottom of the barrel in this scenario? <laughs> mm, I mean, I can almost tell their faces when they walk through the door what, what trade they are. <laughs> yeah. Describe you know, it if you had to. Say you had to paint a picture to somebody. These children's so, faces. So <laughs> these twenty. If well, if it's not like a Mexican crew, if there's not a Mexican crew doing drywall or putting up studs, you're gonna see. I mean, 
the oldest looking 37 year old you've ever seen strung <laughs> out obviously a pounder monster in his hand cigarette butt that he probably picked up off the ground because he, he forgot he didn't have enough time to go grab a pack this morning probably out of his truck flicks it mumbles something to his compadre who also is in a cutoff tank top with the ugliest tattoos you've ever seen in your life which he got drunk and and put these tattoos on his body probably yeah. just woke up from you know some strip club parking lot about two hours before but made it to work just to put up drywall for about sixteen seventy five an hour. Not all heroes wear capes, my friends. Nope. <laughs> Daryl with the greasiest, <laughs> greasiest skull that you've ever seen in your life walks through the Still. door. You know shit's about to get done, and a lot of cigarettes are about to be smoked. That's that's <laughs> all I know. Yep. <laughs> you got a problem with the way he drywalls? He packs your he packs your electrical boxes full of mud. You want to fuck with Daryl? I don't think so. That no. guy's like a spider monkey coming at you. He does. He's been to prison many times. He does not mind it. He gets three square he does meals. Not there. mind it. He do, he gets three square meals. A little bit of outside time. Sure, no cigarettes unless you know you do some favors back and forth. But that's better than here. I don't give a shit. That's what it is. This and is I love. I, I just love like the the banter on the, at these places. Like, if you were to talk, even. One iota, you know, what we converse with each other like in a, you know, office setting, you'd be fired on the spot. 100%. 100%. We, we call each other the worst names you've ever, you've ever heard. Hazing? <laughs> <laughs> so you thought hazing was bad in college, kids? No. You're working here this summer. No. Strap in. Yeah, strap in. Where'd my tools go? Oh, Check the ceiling. <laughs> Look up. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, for ninety nine percent of it sucks. The one percent is pretty comical if you got a good sense of humor about it and you're in a good mood and you've had a good night's sleep and you can you know recollect things and see things in a lighter point of view. Otherwise, go to college, kids. <laughs> That's your PSA for the day. Yes. Yes. That's good. That's good current events, Cody. That's good oh, current events. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> so have you done anything other than sweatshop or just uh just that? You know, we're uh doing the drywall up there in the new McDonald's, but <laughs> oh my Vasco God. Lingus. Uh no, we've been um I've been fishing a decent amount, taking a few people out fishing, which has been fun. Um and that's always an interesting uh, I mean, if you've ever, you know, are, are you strictly guiding out. muskies for the most part? Yeah. yeah. But these are I like mean, people like you're, you're just booking random people. These aren't yeah, like just random people. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you don't know what you're going to run into. It, it takes about five minutes, not even, it takes about one cast and you know what the day is about to lead up to. And it takes about three minutes of conversation to know if you want to jump out of your boat and hold on to the anchor or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but it is, it is pretty, it is pretty interesting. I mean, like the, the way you have to go about fishing, you're like, well, I know I can catch that fish right there, but how does a person, how, how do I get a person who can't cast more than five feet that fish? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. And it's it's funny you'll you'll be fishing with them, and I'll be like, well, if I hook one, do you do you want the rod? I have no problem passing over the rod. No, no, no. You reel that in. You reel that in. They change their mind pretty quick after not seeing anything for about two hours, and you hook one. They are back to the back back of the boat, grabbing that rod out of my hands before I can even pass it off. <laughs> like I'll take that. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Big one. Big one. Big one. <laughs> Showing all their construction buddies their forty-five inch they caught. Oh my god. Yeah, it's a. Have you always just wanted to guide muskies when you're guiding, or have you ever thought about like, what if I just guide smallmouth or something like that? Uh, um, where, yeah, I've, where, thought, I've, I've thought about it. Um, actually, the a lot of things just pay way better. 
I mean, I guess you could charge whatever you wanted to charge. I mean, I know like certain guys are, are charging way more than musky guys are for smallmouth. Like I know Josh yeah. is getting a pretty good rate on, on Mille Lacs and, um, but it, it also helps that like you have, you know, tour credentials and this and that, and you can also teach people like you have credentials for certain things. Um, but I will bring like spinning rods with me, like say we're fishing like Tomahawk or something. You can't keep any of the walleyes, but I mean, they're pretty easy to catch. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it doesn't take a lot of effort. Yeah. All right. Drop down. All right. Reel up your jigging wrap. Oh, you got one. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's so, yeah, I do bring a couple like extra rods in case I see the guys fading. Um, but for the most part, it's muskies. Nice. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I've always heard that musk that musky guiding deal is just brutal unless you have like return clients that are good because you just you <laughs> people's just like expectations are get, so man. whack. Well, it, it's so hilarious. Like I'll ask, I'll be like, "So what are you looking for? Are you looking to catch a fish? Are you looking for a big one? Um, like what are you looking for out of this trip? Well, I want a big one. Well, my first response is to go to the biggest numbers lake that I can find in the area." <laughs> <laughs> and give it about 20 minutes to see what the mood is like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we're complaining after about 20 minutes. Not a chance. Not a chance. No. <laughs> no. It's going to be a long eight hours. Damn. Because most of these people probably don't musky fish at all, right? No. No, no, no. Not at all. Like, uh, I had a kid. Oh. I had a guy with me. Um, actually, he went to the same high school um, quite a few years younger, like my brother's age, like 10 years younger than me. And yeah. we had an awesome trip. Like, we hit the window absolutely perfect. I mean, it couldn't have been an easier trip within. I gave him a bucktail because I didn't know if he could rip rubber through weeds or whatever. So I'm like, all right, just throw us over the cabbage. I'm like, maybe yeah. you'll see one. And he caught with it, caught one within like five minutes, like a 42 inch. I'm like, wow, day's done. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and we proceeded to like, he experienced everything in musky fishing. He saw figure eight fish. He lost one in the figure eight. He lost one on rubber. He watched me lose like a 50 incher, um, lost another one, like a 48, caught another fish. Like he had an awesome trip, but we hit it just perfectly. And it helped that he could cast and he yeah. listened. Like people who listen usually do a lot better than um, people who just have their own ideas. Dude, Musky I got fishing. I got to know, though, what you you never told me actually about it. But what was the deal with the with? You took somebody fishing with a tube. What was the deal with that? That was the that was the next day. So <laughs> <laughs> I just I wanted this story so bad. Oh my god, man. So the next day I was guiding out on Tom and that it was like right before I was I, I really didn't have like a good finger on where the fish were out there yet, if they had moved where they normally move or if they're just kind of all over the place. And so I went just like hunting for fish just to see them. And I raised like a mega, just a mega, a big one, like mm -hmm. 50 and a half, 51 incher. Wow. And um, took this guy, took this guy to it at, at moon. I'm like, just get ready. Just get ready. Just get ready. Like there's a giant that's sitting here right now. And I can see your inside imaging when, before I picked you up. And I'm like, if it's going to go, it's going to go right now. And he just had a bunch of action on his bait. So I was letting him have his bait. And I'm throwing a tube and all of a sudden, wham, got him. I'm like, oh, I'm like, kind of felt bad. But at the same time, I'm like, eh, fuck you, dude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reel this one in. And I'm like, all right, it's a big one. And he's freaking out with the net. He's like, dude, that's the biggest fucking fish I've ever seen. That's the biggest fucking fish. I'm like, just settle down. We got her. We got her. Go around the boat once. He tries to stab at it. I'm like, just put the net in the water and I will leave the fish in. Not a big deal. It's okay. It's okay. I'm like, and in the back of my mind, I'm like, there's there's zero percent chance this thing comes in the net. There's not a chance. <laughs> go around the boat like two times. Go to swing it into the net. And I'm like, just hold it there. Just hold it there. Just couldn't help himself. Stabs it right in the face of the fish. <laughs> Come on. Stuffs it as clean into the mouth as he could. Oh I mean, the tube God. is just gagged sideways, both hooks. And I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Shit, shit, shit. 
<laughs> grab the net, try to grab the fish, almost get a hook in the hand. And as soon as like it made one head shake, another head shake, and it just sat there unhooked, sitting there. And it took, I think I bit my tongue off not to say Oof. anything. I could literally almost touch the fish. It was so close to my hand. Like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> And I kind of looked at him. I'm like, it's all right. He's like, yeah, we'll catch a bigger one anyways. I'm like, <laughs> and you're like, dude, that was Loki, probably one of the biggest fish in this entire lake. I'm like, nope, nope, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. That was, nope. that was her. That was her. That was her. Oh my god! Yeah, so that was fun. But, no, that was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, what, was what was the rest of the trip like? Was it just? <laughs> No, I mean he was he was decent. He wasn't like I mean I've had some guys where you think like, yeah they 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 don't just have animal meat in their fridge. I know that ain't just animal meat. They get in your boat and you're like, wow. <laughs> but uh, no, it was it was fine. Like we raised a couple of fish. He had he had one shot at at a nice one like a forty four or something, but. Um, yeah, you never got in the net. I don't know. The, the odds of like some of these, these guys getting a fish actually in the net, let alone casting the casting is one thing. Then retrieving the bait, bait properly is another, a whole nother thing. And then actually when, you know, confronted with the miracle that is a muskie biting this person's bait, then, I mean, your odds are basically at 0.00001% of actually catching a muskie, it seems like. With a lot of people. <laughs> so, so they're more than happy with seeing a fish, I've realized. Oh, damn, dude. Yeah. It's kind, of, it's kind of a grind, but at the same time, it's like it's super rewarding when one of these people actually catch one. Oh, you're, all, yeah. you're, you're actually more excited than they are because you're in such disbelief yeah. that this person <laughs> was actually able to do it, to put it together. <laughs> but oh my god it is it, it is a lot of fun I, it's a different sort of fishing that's not, wild yeah yeah i don't i don't envy that position <laughs> it's it's certainly frustrating and you got to have a lot of patience for people and like yeah. especially people who don't like listen like people who don't listen it's like eh, well all right well and you like already know that they're like not gonna get one no yeah i, I know 100 percent. like you you're not going to catch one. Do you yeah. ever guide during sucker season when you can like put them under yeah. a float? Oh, that's, that's, that's good. Oh, that's so easy. Like I, I was doing it on Dubay and like the river stretches around here last, last fall. And it's so easy. Cause you like, it's so convenient for me to have them cast. And then me just like hold a sucker rod, like right up next to the tree that I know there's a fish in. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, come on, come on, buddy. Just do it. I know you're like 35 inches. I've caught you like four times in the last week, but just one more time. <laughs> and yeah, that that the old guys really like that, especially it seems like older guys in the fall come out because they like seeing, you know, leaves change, colors change. And yeah, it's pretty easy fishing. Just let me tow them around with a bunch of bobbers out. One goes off, they get to set the hook and. That's Otherwise, cool. they're sipping whiskey and coffee and smoking <laughs> cigarettes and cigars. That's the life right there. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They tell All me right. about Nam and I listen. <laughs> All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a quick bathroom break. And then All right. do, we, do we jump into what should we jump into next? Well, I think we're, we'll, we'll get the weigh in going when you come back. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, do your thing. Do your thing. Honor. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> 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 Oh my God, man! I'm I'm I'm, just, I'm, I'm toning I'm toning things down dramatically right now because I don't want to incriminate anyone that's been in my boat because <laughs> I want <laughs> I really want them to come back. Oh yeah, Dude, but they I don't do. Know. They don't know. No, I do try. <laughs> like I I have learned patience. Yeah, and I do try really hard to like catch them up to speed as fast as possible yeah but 99 percent of the time dude it's just like it's a losing battle especially it is, with people it's that suck. So, and you and you just like you, you just want to be fun fun fishing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and i'll i'll like see the fish that they botch and I'm, i'll watch their rod tip 
I'd be like, oh my god! I'm like, uh, uh, set, 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 set. Like you literally like, watch him get bit. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, well, we're gonna need a new tube. That one's destroyed. All right, we'll put that one aside. All right, try this one out this time. <laughs> They're like, well, the rod's not very sensitive. I'm like, it's a six hundred and fifty dollar rod. I don't know what to do for it. And the fifth, eighth that is like twenty pounds. So. Is twenty pounds? I, I thought it was weeds. I told you we're not fishing weeds. We're out in a hundred fathoms. Dude, I I gotta say that just reminds. So I did a back in the day. I'll probably tell this story another time. But I went on this squid trip, squid fishing trip thing. Mm-hmm. Whatever. But well, basically there was a deckhand on that boat. So when you know you're like, oh, like it's weeds or whatever. So on that trip, so there's like the the mates on these like party yeah. boats are just the most just. <laughs> I, I can mean, only imagine. Like you think the people on these construction sites are like salty oh. motherfuckers? Like these guys are just Crazy. and uh, <laughs> Great. and we're out there and there's like these guys that have no idea what they're doing. It was like a nighttime trip too, yep. and you're in like two thousand feet of water. Mm-hmm. You know, just ridiculous. It's like way offshore, and. Uh, and like all these schools of squid are like they're they're like suspended, right? And then they come up to, they come up to the boat and you start to catch them. Yep. And we get out to the spot and like you know the captain's like he's got the sonar and everything and he's like yelling out there, oh they're like you know they're at like three hundred feet or five hundred feet or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they're telling you like you know free, you're using like a thirty six ounce lead to get <laughs> the shit down. Jeez. But like they're just like they're like just free spool it and you know like you're pretty much gonna let out like all your line <laughs> and then yeah. just like re- and then just like reel it in. <laughs> yeah and uh but this guy in the back gets hooked up immediately and but it, it, and like these things they just you can't pick the rod off the rail right you're just like pinned to the rail so yeah. the guy he, he lets out like 200 feet of line and then his rod just loads up and yeah. he's yelling at the guy i'm snagged i'm snagged like they're gonna <laughs> like they're gonna like turn the boat around or something right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, it's literally 2,000 feet deep. Like, <laughs> you're not snagged. And, and the guy's yelling, he's snagged, he's snagged. And then the deckhand just turns around and looks the guy dead in the face. And he's like, I'm snagged on the bottom. And, and literally, like, spitting in his face, he's like, there is no bottom out here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. But that, yeah, those people that work on those boats don't make enough money, dude. That's no, that, that guy no. thing to say. Like, these people are just idiots. Just salty. I had, I had a guy the the one day. Oh my gosh, this is one of those Ed Gein characters. I had him. I had him out on the river. I met him at this gas station, and I yeah. knew within about like ten seconds just the way he walked to the truck. I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a long four hours. I'm like, ooh, yikes. <laughs> Comes in, he's got a 24 pack of Bud Light that he set down for himself. Gets in the boat, and I can already smell it on him. He is blasted, absolutely piss hammered drunk. Proceeds to almost fall out of the boat like five times while we're out there talking about the weirdest shit you could ever imagine. And his sentences are incoherent. And I think even if he was sober, they'd be incoherent. Yeah. And on the way back in, yeah. like he lost a fish. Um, raised a fish like for four hours you can't expect a whole lot more on the way back (laughs) he spills an entire beer down the side of my seat i drop him off (laughs) he tipped me five (laughs) dollars in ones (laughs) no (laughs) nice oh my god what you're welcome back anytime yeah yeah he's like Oh, that was great. Like, yeah. Yeah, for me too. Me too. That was great. It's good for that me. Was awesome. Yeah. Yep. Oh my can't god. Can't even I can't even go to Culver's afterwards with five dollars. What am I what do you want me to do? Oh shit. That seemed was worse, dude. Oh, it was like you can just have it. <laughs> just... Your guide life is making me depressed, dude. Mm. <laughs> it really is. Mm. All right, let's get into this weigh-in. So we're right. doing – this time uh, we're doing a, another weigh-in, so we're going to go around. Uh, we're doing four picks again. We'll have to come up with a creative way here to, to pick who goes first. Uh, maybe since it's Bart's birthday, you want to just go, like, by whose birthday is when in order? Yeah. So I don't I don't even know whose is what. Mine's in March. Maybe Mine's in August. August. April. Ooh, all right. Well, I guess that settles that. Yep. You're first. 
So I'll go. I'll go one. Honors two. So it'll be your three. So you get back to back. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna. The way that this segment works is we're all gonna snake draft through this thing. We'll all pick four times. Um, and the topic of today's weigh-in is the worst parts of summer. The absolute worst things about summer. Little disclaimer: I, I read our group text earlier today, and I thought it was the best part of summer. So this is gonna be pretty, pretty winging it here. So, <laughs> all right, well, we'll see how this thing goes. I think this is gonna be a good one. But all right, so I'll lead this thing off. So my my one of one pick is gonna be sunburn in the shower. Oh, that is good. I just. I was oh. I was going just for sunburn, but I was like, it's a little too. But then I was like, no, what do you mm-hmm. really care about? That's yep. it. Yeah, you're like, not having like any day hot water. two, day two sunburn in the shower. Oh, where it's starting to yeah. peel. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, you get the flakes mm. rolling. You know, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, right yeah. in the skin box. Sunburn shower. Yeah, that's a brutal one. That is. Brutal. Yeah, that's straight right. cold shower time. <laughs> All right, Hunter, what do you got? Okay, so I am going to pick this one. Um, worst thing about summer, the end. Oh, just, just the end of it. Just the end. Here. Just the end. Yeah, that's yep. a good one. That's a good one. That's that's solid. an oxymoron good one. When do you it, when when do you consider like the end? Well, I th- I always think of the start of summer as ticking down to the end and closer to winter. So you're just trying to enjoy and grasp on to as much of it as you can. But by the time, by the time you like you're into June, it's already middle of August. Like what are we on right now? It's the ninth. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And it's basically done as soon as I think as soon as that first, um, that first like 60, the first two days of like 65, it's done. Yeah. All right. All right. So the first uh, my, like cool day. Yeah, it's my, usually like that September. Back my to back. Birthday, yep. My birthday is August 22nd. And I think that's when I really I like I've always hated my birthday. I've yeah. hated it because that's my the whole life started it school. was like a school was a oh, week that's later. Brutal, dude. Football practice. And you and even if you oh, love football, like oh. no one wants to go to football practice then. No, summer the is over. Days. Everything is over. Like mm. uh, I my whole life, I've honestly hated my birthday. My whole that, entire life. That is brutal. That's man. bad I hated timing, it. bro. I, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I hate oh. it. So it's not there yet. So I don't consider that. Toward the you end got time. Yet. You got, got time. time. We're, yeah. But when my birthday pops up, don't don't send a text. Don't, don't send s- anything. <laughs> don't say anything. Don't don't talk to me. <laughs> don't talk to mm. me. All right, Zoe. What do you got? Um, I, it, it sounds cliche, but hear me out. I'm going to say the bugs and I'm not going off of mosquitoes. The mm-hmm. worst part of summer, I think is like, there'll be like these short windows where like a week will pop up and like every wasp in the whole County wants to, to just bed mm-hmm. underneath my deck or the box elder bugs will like cover my whole backyard of my uh, house. Yeah. And it's like a two or three or a week window where this happens. And you're just like, Hor- it's horrible. I think it's horrible. So just the random bug popping that happens in the summer, you're kind of like, I don't know. We live in this desolate place called the Midwest, and it's when it happens, you're just a little thrown off. I'll, I'll put it that is. in as bug hatches. Bug hatches. <laughs> yes. Night fishing during that. Oh. I mean, like, if I see it, if I'm by myself, I'm like, I'm good. Ah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> but it depends on who I'm fishing with because some of these guys are so nutty about musky fishing. They got, like, triple bug nets that they're wearing over their heads with the headlamp underneath. And we are casting. That's intense. Yes. Nothing faces us. Nothing. Anything for a bite. Your reel like, is getting like plugged up with yes. mayflies. Yeah. It's Ugh. like, co- it's like that cotton weed or whatever. Yeah. You're like, what are we doing out here? Oh. 40 incher. <laughs> You're like, what are we doing? What are we oh doing? What are we doing? That is that's that's a solid one. I actually I had on my list. I just had <laughs> you'll like this. I read it. It just says hornets, period. <laughs> Hornet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll I'll let that one go. You you got the bug thing. <laughs> All right, you go back to back here, Sam. Okay. Um then maybe another cliche one. I, I told you I'm winging it here. Uh humidity in general. I don't love winter, but when it gets super like we just come off a 
uh, a week where it's just been 90 plus degrees and flat, calm and humid as hell. And Sultry. it just, I feel like we're just not built for it in the Midwest. You're we're right. just like, <sighs> no breathing heavy. No. I, I don't know. It's the air is yeah. thick boy. It's yeah. thick. You can <laughs> deep oh, fry it. runs in our blood. It does. Like, <laughs> we, we've got oil instead of blood. <laughs> I know. I'm picturing <laughs> all the slow. human beings in Wisconsin eating curds and then walking um, outside. And <laughs> they get hit oh. with that humidity. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I like that one. The humidity. That's good. All right, Connor, well, where, where are you going with your second pick here? Oh, shoot. I guess, Sam, I, I don't even have this on my list, but um, Sam with the school thing has brought up just some ugly memories. <laughs> I was going to say uh, the middle school school shopping, that one day where you had to go with your mom to go mm. get notebooks Back and to pencils <laughs> yes, and colored pencils and oh. – She's all excited because you're finally out of the freaking house and she doesn't have to deal with you anymore. But it was always the worst day. Just oh, the worst day where that's you had the everything. End. That felt like the and end. You're, and you're labeling and mm. getting your planner and you got to cover your books with fucking news or whatever, you know, paper. Yeah. All the paper right. grocery bags. Yeah. Yeah. That, you're same right. Deal uh, also, also, like when you were way younger, like, you'd you'd go to like meet your room or something like that or meet yes. the classroom it was like you it, it's not school yet but you would go and you'd like meet your teacher or find your room maybe this was more like fourth fifth grade and you would just be like dude i'm about to be here for like this nine sucks. months and this like, sucks. like it, it's something sucks. if i if i smelled the smell of my elementary school i would know it instantly out of a yep. million you'd, you'd, out be of like, a million yeah. you'd be like asleep you'd, you'd be, be like, like oh, <laughs> oh oh or like <laughs> Another another smell like from school was when you were a senior, you could smell the freshmen. Oh, you could yeah. smell them. Or oh, you touch yeah. a handle and you're like, oh my gosh. And it's just slick. It's just slick with <laughs> grease. Just, just greasy, B.O. little monsters. You're like, oh my God. Oh, gross. <laughs> they're like, oh, this wing. Oh my God. Oh, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> hornets. Oh, hornets. <laughs> Taking your backpack and just. Argh! God damn, school sucks, dude. It, mm. Dude, like that. When you really do think about it, like I just like imagine getting that horrible feeling in your stomach of like I still school I still, is like I don't you still get it a little bit? Oh, all the Isn't time. That crazy. Dude. I'll wake up because I was such a procrastinator in college. I would do things. I'd be like. <sighs> We have a final tomorrow. All right. Bear down. And you'd wake up in a cold sweat and just flying through books. Yes. Just flying through it. And it's full now focus. I, full focus. Full like focus. Freaking the movie yeah. limit. Focus. List, dude. And I mean, I'm like, I need I need brain food. What do I have for brain food? A quarter box of Triscuits and a couple more like licks off of the can of like Peter Pan peanut butter and peanut butter. <laughs> Perfect. We're going. Perfect. Triscuits in. <laughs> <laughs> in. Oh, that was the worst. I still wake up with nightmares. I'd be like, oh shit. Nope. Nope. No, we're going no. to a, we're going to a, a greater hell today. Whew. There we're is too much. <laughs> there is like right away, like in, in August or September when it first happens, like I'll be maybe I'll be driving around and you like see the school buses back out for the first time and you kind of like <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. Like you see some kids out of here, yeah. like, oh, that sucks, dude. That sucks so bad. I forget schools back in though, dude. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, or you man. see, you That's see, the, you see the high school football players out on the field. I'm like, oh <laughs> yes, dude. Do you? Oh yes, dude. Back, those were the days, Horrible. huh? God. No, those are not the days. <laughs> no, dude. No, far from it. Far from it. All right. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm going here. All right, I'm going back to back. I'm taking uh, the people who keep saying they wish it was winter. Oh. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Oh. And then they like, and they like post about, they like, they want to post yeah. it on like, Facebook. yeah, it'll be like one hot day. And they're like, wishing it was winter right now. I'm like, yeah. do you? Yeah. Do you? Because you don't. I know. Do you, you rem? 
Do you remember the year of 2016 that winter? <laughs> I think. Do you I remember? Think, I think it was Studer. He, he works at Vexlar. He posted like "Won't be long now," and it was him standing like two feet of ice, reeling the fish. And I was like, "Dude, you don't need to be." Uh, I'm you gonna tell you right now: if you post an ice fishing picture between June and August, you can suck it. You yeah. don't need to do that. Yeah. You don't need to do you that just, now. Go away. Mm. Go away. Mm. <laughs> no nope. instant instant unfollow unfriend Mm-mm. that that's we just don't have this, the line here our folks. morals just <laughs> do not line up Mm-mm. all right uh all right so i got it going back to back here god i'm starting to dig deep i feel like a lot of my good ones are i'm all right uh, i'm going for it i'm going i'm going with everything that melts in the cab of my truck <laughs> mm. Mm. I feel like I always manage that's, to like put, really some, yeah, yeah. put some shit yeah. in the cup holder. Yep. You know, yeah. and then I like go into work or whatever, and then you come out and you're like, damn it. Yep. You ever find Why like you got loose that? loose chains, loose change like by your cup holders, and then there'll be some sort of residue on it. Like uh, I mean, you don't exactly or, know or you was left that from like food, food Mike was it and from I a drink on top yeah. of them somehow. And it turned but into you'll like grab a puddle. change and it's sticky with something. <laughs> you don't know. You smell your fingers mm. and you're still unsure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's yeah. a good one. So I'm taking that one. Melt, melt, various. What am I? How do I? Everything melts, melting in the truck. Mm-hmm. I'll figure that out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. This is a good one. Uh, Honor, you're up. All right. It seems like there's two seasons in construction. Um, this may be the most inhumane part of our job. <laughs> oh, this, damn it. this hands stuff. down, far and away, the most inhumane things. I, I, I still cannot believe. Yeah, OSHA won't let us stand on top of a ladder, but sure as hell, they'll allow you to go in the shit sauna, 145 <laughs> degrees in there, oh. that hasn't been cleaned in four weeks. And Pablo and Tucker Brown over there are, you know releasing things that I, I don't know what the what what's going on in there i don't uh, people are unhealthy they're unhealthy, are unhealthy. <laughs> they need fruits and vegetables <laughs> something ain't right something is wrong with you that and you got bugs you've got flies everywhere you know to- you're already sweaty as hell to begin with so i mean the toilet paper that they that they supply you with just does not do the job. The half it does not do the job. The half pie, yeah. I was just thinking yes. that, Ryan. I thought you said it. There's <laughs> whoever <laughs> one wipe and no damage was done. Tissue paper. It, it went <laughs> right through your fingers. Got it. On. The, I, I swear the the oh. the tissue like CEO is just laughing his ass off. He's like, <laughs> he's people like, are going to use this. <laughs> he's like, I don't, know where, I know where these are going. The, the, day, the, the day those came off the line and they set one on like the CEO's desk and they're like, look what we just did. And he's like, I like this. I like this. <laughs> You're going to make millions, but this is not for the greater good. I just like this. That. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Richard, okay. would you like a new position? <laughs> VP of sales. <laughs> VP of sales. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Oh, it's, it's an absolute experience every time i'm in there i i snapchat wyatt stout i'm like have you done it yet today and he'll send me one like 30 minutes later just (gasps) (laughs) drenched and it could be 100 degrees outside as soon as you get out you're like (gasps) fresh air it it feels like it's like winter it's like winter it's like winter it is literally oh it's the most inhumane disgusting thing oh man it's so gross it is. You're stupid. All right. I'll give you that one. What, what are we calling that one? The shit, shit sauna. sauna. <laughs> shit sauna. Shit sauna. Right. Oh, that's such a good way to describe it because it's so true. It yeah. is. That's 100%. I mean, like, like I said, there's two seasons in construction. You've got negative 30. You got the icebox um, shit house, or you have the shit sauna. Yeah. Wow. You take your pick Dude, which one I, you want. How is it possible? Like, you do like physical activity and you'd start to sweat after a while. Yeah. How is it when you go into one of those, you have like actual sweat dripping. Yeah. After yeah. what? Seven seconds. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, and I've been I've been sweating all day. I didn't think it was possible to sweat even harder than that. But and it's immediate. I mean, it is yeah. immediate, dude. Oh. That's what's insane is like within five minutes you can be dripping in in a porta potty that's been sun baked for all day. So gross. That is so gross. gross. And then the flies, the flies, man. Oh yeah. Where they're like oh. touching you and you're like, stop touching. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 you can feel one like feel one come up and like touch you on the underneath. You're like, don't touch me. <laughs> and you never come it's better, out. Back. It's better than getting a little blue juice blowback, you know. Dude, I, I, I give me that blue juice. That blue juice means they're clean. <laughs> it's and that means I, I'm one of the first five in there. That's a great day. <laughs> the, the that hasn't a, reached the surface five. yet. That's that's a highlight of, of my week. If I go in there, I'm like, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's incredible. Oh, highlight Damn. of the week. Damn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Sam, you're up. God um, damn. okay. We'll do a lighter note. We'll go on a lighter note. You got, um, you got two here. So this is your last two. I have two. I thought, oh, we do four. You do, you get four. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. One definitely could be. Okay. So first one, um, fishing in the spring and fishing in the fall way less populated pleasure boats aren't out there people aren't out there but i'm just gonna go with busy boat ramps because okay, in july yeah. and august it's packed if you roll into lake that's got any bit of life form there there is every tom dick and harry putting in their boat there and everybody's out on the lake whether that be jet skiers or freaking wakeboarders anything that but in spring and fall it is like it's just the old men that fish in the morning for pan yep. fish and then it's and then it's us and it's just beautiful so that yep. that'd be a worst part of summer that's so true, though, because you get the people that's like they only take their boat out like twice a year. And you always mm -hmm. run into them right before mm -hmm. they put it. Like always. Yep. They, ain't nothing fails. Mm. Yep. That one's good. That's good. I like that. All right. What else? What's, what's your what's your final um, pick? The worst parts oh. of summer. Oh, my gosh. He's struggling, folks. He's digging oh. real deep. <sighs> Um, once this is over, you got to tell us what your list was for the best parts of summer. <laughs> I ripped it up, dude. Here's my list. That. I ripped it up. <laughs> um, is there anything I could reference there? Give me five minutes. Give me a little, dude. You got it. You got to come up. I know. You have five seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, when the days start to get shorter. I'd probably mm. say that. Just like it's wow, what a strong fine I... pick. <laughs> <laughs> All I could think of, of was the end. Like when I when think of the end of summer uh, that's been stuck in my head since. It's like when the like, sun like, goes down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that part. <laughs> I don't like that part. That means I know that means Sam no fish no for. I can't film in dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me I no have, fish I me edit good list of good parts of summer. <laughs> you blew it you blew it <laughs> oh all right move on move on to someone else don't dwell on that <laughs> all right honor bring us all here me. Uh, are we doing uh are we doing a last call one too or like the? we'll do we'll do yeah at the end Just, you still have your final pick here okay so i uh i live with my little brother there's it's just me and my little brother here. So we like to keep costs low. Well, sometimes that kind of bites us in the ass. You know, wintertime, I've come into this place and it is literally like 37 degrees. <laughs> you buckle up. <laughs> you got you're you're sleeping in a sleeping bag and you're <laughs> and everything else. Whatever you came and you're going out quick as you can to the shower. Well, same thing follows suit for the summertime. We don't use AC, we use windows. In this family, <laughs> keeping costs low to save on the ten dollars that it would probably cost for us to run the AC. There is nothing worse than coming back after a swamp sweaty day, and actually the house is warmer. So yeah. oh I would God. say yeah. I would say warm house. Warm. Oh man, that one's gonna suck. That one's gonna bite me. I'm gonna lose because of that one. Yeah, warm I'm gonna house. say I'm gonna say no AC. I'm no, say AC. no AC. No AC. Right. Yep. Got it. No, but I mean, it's AC. our choice, so I can't really <laughs> we, complain we too do much it to about ourself? it. We no. do it to ourselves. So, are you a are you a windows open during the day or windows closed during the day? 
it doesn't like, really matter. I mean, you know, it, it just it gets hot. Yeah, I yeah. think it's hotter in the house than it is actually outside. So yeah. windows open. Windows yeah. open. Anyone but wants hey, to stop by? We keep get a, a nice breeze, maybe. Too. You know, mm-hmm. all well, right now. Yeah, I. You, you got a fan well, going. You got. We a got. Fan? We got. We got fans going. Yeah. We well, only one fan because we don't want to. We don't want to waste electricity too. <laughs> lights yeah. off. Lights wind, off. Wind powered fan. Yep. How long are you using the microwave for? A minute and thirty. You only need a minute. Cut it. You down. only need a minute. It's a chicken breast. It's a chicken breast. Oh my god, dude! That's you guys got a hell of a living situation there. I mean, it, I mean, it's. it's I'm starting kind of, to think Will's got something figured out out at the barn, dude. Yeah, dude, it's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's kind right, of no, man. no AC. God, that's actually solid. All right, final pick. Final pick. What do we got? All right. I feel like this one is a little vague, but I feel like it's going to be relatable enough to to get me the dub here. Yeah. Just leaning into something metal oh. during the day. Yeah. Mm. Or you, you touch your bare feet on like some hot pavement, or you just do you do you touch you, your skin to something that's been you lean on big. a railing the wrong way. You know. You you, you step on the the problem spot on your boat. Oh. Barefoot. Yeah. 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 Yep. Just oh. one little, one little mm-hmm. exposed like screw head. Yep. yep. Anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, I'm. Yeah. So I, like I don't know what do we what do we call that? What do we call it? Um, metal. God. Second degree summer burns. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna call I'm gonna call that uh, touching, searing hot metal. <laughs> all right all right i'll read through these and then and then if you got any honorable mentions we'll burn through those okay so i got mine is uh sunburn shower uh people who wish it was winter everything melting in the truck and touching searing hot metal not bad not bad connor has got the end of it back back to school shopping Shit sauna and no AC. That's kind of that's strong. I, <laughs> I, my, you know, my reputation in these. You, you are, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's coming Man, along. King. Uh, Sobe, Sobe with the bug hatches, mm-hmm. humidity, mm-hmm. Uh, busy boat ramps. Could yep. you put intense in front of humidity just for some more adjectives? Intense humidity uh, yes. or unbearable I'll, humidity. Are you not satisfied with your list, Sam, that you're <laughs> fluffing just gonna, it up? I would just like to fluff it a little bit. <laughs> unbearable humidity. I'll put, unbearable. I'll put humidity parentheses Insufferable unbearable. people. Yeah, <laughs> insufferable. Life-threatening humidity. <laughs> Life th- I like that. Okay. Um, and then uh, busy boat ramps and when the days get shorter. When the day turns to night. <laughs> I'm plumb out. It's all here. I'm an empty glass. Wow. Water. wow. We must light the is- torch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> Anybody got any honorable mentions here? I got, I got one. Right, it was gonna it. play. Well, I was gonna use Sam's, but then I thought of, I thought of one. So, um, you know, the off season, nobody's really up in these tourist towns. Yeah, Something yeah. that I just can't stand when I'm like running late or like, I don't running late to a bite or a bite window or running late to pick somebody up, is the families out, you know, do it tooling around and on bikes, where like the kids like. <laughs> in and out of the road and there's a line of cars coming this way and you're you're crawling just crawling you're like you should know I what should i hit him <laughs> the intrusive thoughts are, are creeping up he's They're gonna creeping learn up. today maybe maybe this one wasn't supposed to be on earth anymore <laughs> <laughs> oh well hey I think, I think I think I think just like the tourists just w- like blindly walking around like following everybody else <laughs> And they're doing it the wrong way. They're like, oh, look, look at the tourist shop. Oh, it says Minocqua on the keychain. 
<laughs> I'm sure I'm sure you spent enough time in Monaco or just around tourist towns, like just fishing that like it's almost so identifiable. Like you oh, can just you can dude. smell them, you can see them you probably see- from you know, yep. Yep. 200 I, I, yards I, I, away and be like, you, you're not even from here. The dad is not always in the either. back. The dad is always in the back. He looks like he's hating life, but he's just there for the family. He's just <laughs> there for the family. It's not his cabin. It's like her uncle's cabin. Oh, he's up there. Yeah. He hates that uncle. He hates he that hates uncle. Them. hates that whole side of the they family. They get invited now, here every year. And now he's got to go <laughs> spend money on ice cream, on shirts, <laughs> on rentals. And he's up in Manaqua. And then he's got to go where, home to I his office. Wonder, where, where do they get all the cargo shorts? Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's always have... blow. <laughs> well, that's for all the keychains and <laughs> gimmick for the goodies, of course. That's for the, goodie, <laughs> for the goodies, of course. Oh that's... my god, dude! I know I can like picture this guy. Oh, and then oh. and then we got to go go karting, and then we mm. got to go play mini golf. Mm-hmm. And all he wants to do is sit in the chair, have a beer. And forget about his miserable life for just five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! And how is it that those top, dude, like Monaco, Eagle River? How are pe- how are these places that just sell those goddamn printed T-shirts making it? Dude, I I, I don't get it, but they're packed. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it's nothing are, special. It's not. The, it just says just Monaco. Iron and on. Yeah, you know? it just says Monaco. Like we did that in high school. Like. <laughs> It, it, it takes like two seconds. Monopoly. They got to figure it out, dude. I've never seen one of those stores close. Establish right? 1922. And it'll be like a red one, a blue one, a yellow one, a green one, obviously Packers. <laughs> and and it'll just, oh, and, a Badger one. And oh. the tie-dye one's five more dollars. So. Yep, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that is oh. incredible that people roll in there and they're like, yes, we're all you're getting right. them. You yeah, get you've, them. Seen, you're, you're, you've seen the right? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the the mini golf course, it, like when you're coming, um, when you're going north up into Manaqua, the yeah. two mini golf courses and like the horse rides, who yeah. pays for a horse ride Who's in Manaqua on a loop that's like a quarter mile? Yeah, these and like that place is packed. That's crazy. Packed. See, it's I the think... same people that are going to the zoo there. These oh, people the are packed too. <laughs> They're geniuses. They are. They they have figured out. They went okay. If some people decide to just come here and then they have no plans otherwise, what are we going to put up that they're going to pay a lot of money for that they can burn about an hour and then we're going to make a lot of money off of it. And then more people are going to do it to burn an hour, do whatever. Because like, I do feel like just like we had described that scenario of that dad who's up in his uncle's cabin. He's like, (laughs) you know, at least we're not sitting at freaking uncle Jim's yeah. cabin. And I got to yeah. sit here and hear about the war stories back when he was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he went to college and rolled a keg all the way across the campus. Like, no, 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 we're going to yep. go out we're going to get some ice cream and I will pay for you to go on an hour horse ride. And we're going to burn a yes. whole freaking day doing, doing yes. shenanigans stuff. And yes. those people that capitalize on it, mad respect. Oh, well, do you ever hear the story about the St. Germain golf course? No, it's so this one guy, he's this big, like, I don't know, business venture capitalist dude like makes a ton of money he he bought this golf course up in what he thought was the middle of nowhere just as like for tax reasons to you know lose some money on it (laughs) it is now the most popular golf course up in in the north woods (laughs) really it is flying flying. (laughs) failed successfully for that man he's Hmm. got to be like are you serious we're making money on this yeah yeah. Making a lot of money on that this can't thing. be booked right. every tea time. Booked, it's That's great. Crazy. You got you got to you got to make it shittier. You got to make it shittier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make that shittier. <laughs> yeah, div it that up. Div it that up. Div it that up. Div that up. <laughs> Scare the Chicagoans. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was. <laughs> How did that fit into this way in it all? <laughs> The tourists. Just the tourists. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. It's like, where did we go? Oh, uh, well, that was oh good. Oh, my God. All right, yeah. you got any other ones? Oh, I can keep going. <laughs> Get me started. <laughs> okay. I don't have any honorable mentions, but I, I want to, we're not going to go into a tangent, but I want to say that the porta potty one from Honor was just truly incredible. And I'm picturing I've, it. I actually I feel I it. Felt and the one. end of summer, like when it, you get that feeling right before you went to school or, and you mm-hmm. still get it now, like, Yep. It's just like, 
and then you can like when you said you can sometimes if it was to come across your nose the smell of like the inside of your school your desk the inside of your desk <laughs> and you smell it like in august right as it's approaching if you were to smell that right now you'd wake up in a yeah, yeah oh yeah sweat. yep yep and you'd go oh, yep. uh-uh yep. uh-uh You'd look up your names on the board with two checks behind it. You know, mom's getting a call. You're going to the principal's office. Yeah. Yep. yep. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do it. I Everyone don't know if I can do, do it. I don't know if I can do it. I can't do this. I can't do this. I guess I'm just not going to read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Oh, I'm going to be good. a construction. Why do I have to? Why do I have to read? <laughs> if only they could see you now. <laughs> Flying, soaring. Should right. we should we parlay this into notes on your phone? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So we we haven't done this one in a while, uh, but we've just been compiling some observations in the world, and uh, we would love to share them. Yeah. So Sam, you want to lead it off? Yeah. Um, okay. One thing I've written down. So I was like, however many YouTube videos. I put out or don't put out. I've, I've just acquired so much footage of just random stuff. Maybe I've filmed or whatever that never sees the light of day. This was just a couple clips. I opened up the other day. I don't know why it was on this hard drive, whatever, but this is back from the 4th of July. And this is some of the best footage ever. And I don't know when I'm going to put it out, but up at the 4th of July, I, I had, I'd been drinking quite a few beers, you know, and, <laughs> and um, nobody wanted to do fishing anymore. And I can't just like go out fishing um, I got to like, you know, spend some family time and stuff like that. There's little nieces and nephews running around everywhere. It's haywire. The adults aren't paying any attention to their children whatsoever. Cause they're on vacation, right? Like they don't want to take care of them. So these children will like flock to me and my girlfriend and they're just like crawling on us. You know what I mean? So yeah. we have to just like, think about these games and think, just like keep these kids semi entertained as, yeah. as we kind of like, you know, half cock watch them. Right. <laughs> so I find this footage of, of me figuring out this game to like keep these children in line as you know, the parents are burning time. And this is incredible. Steph is holding like the camera and in, in kind of my stupor, I set up these two cones, dude. And I, and I tied a nerf ball to my flipping stick. And I said, the two cones are safe. And I stood up on the deck and I said, this is called fishing dodgeball. Think about how hard you could throw a Nerf ball on your freaking flipping stick. Dude, I was flipping, and dude, I was freaking pegging these kids. I swear to God, 80 miles an hour. Boom, boom, boom. Really, boom, boom. Some of them are getting hit in the head. They're crying, and the parents and stuff finally stop. And I'm like, no, dude, it's burning all their energy. No. Dude, it's, there's footage of me just like on this freaking deck going, boom, boom. And I'm just firing at these like eight-year-olds right uh, in the side. And it's... I, oh I don't know God. how this slipped my brain. I don't know if I ever remember I filmed it, but this is just, I had to put it in notes on my phone. The footage is incredible. Fishing dodgeball. If you're a fisherman and you have family functions and there's children, you need to do it. I think you need to send me about one minute of that that we can post. Okay. What? You need to send me like a minute of that that we can post. I'll do it, dude. I have to. <laughs> we got to use that. It's so good. It's incredible. You should see me peg these children so hard. <laughs> Sometimes in the side, sometimes in the head. And what are, these are like, these are like, so what, like Steph's cousins or what? Yeah, Steph has like older brothers and sisters and they all have like four kids. Like, oh, yeah. so there's just children <laughs> everywhere. There's like a dozen children running around. So I sometimes can just like flock shoot them too if I don't even, if I'm feeling a little unconfident. <laughs> I love I that it's like you got, you got this game like figured out now. You're like, I played this long enough. Oh, dude, we this went on for hours and the kids loved it and I just was rocketing them, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's good that's good honor you got one here yeah i i got this little snapchat video it was like one of the funniest things i saw on the wall i it was actually pretty cool so there's these two little boys and they're on this freaking balled out brand new jet ski and obviously the parents are not fishermen but this kid's got his cousin or brother or whatever driving the jet ski <laughs> oh, as he's oh my gosh Oh, is he like trolling as he's trolling the weed line and he's giving the kid directions like no 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 slower down you want to be at 3.5 3.5 that's not 3.5 that's awesome yeah tell me he caught one i i asked <laughs> oh, him if he's my. ever caught one doing that i'm like you ever catch one he's like not yet oh like, <laughs> not have yet the, have the spot it's all you it's all you and then yeah. the, here's, they, they had this, to be like this is the kid old. that's gonna catch a 50. Oh yeah, absolutely, 
absolutely. Yeah. He's going to slide it into like the, the foot railing, run that thing back <laughs> over, show everybody. <laughs> we caught yeah. a big fish. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yep. And they had to be a total, like the one kid's maybe eight years old, the other kid's maybe nine. That's so sick. <laughs> yeah, it was sweet. It was sweet. Dude, I love um, that. Yeah, that was that was one, and then I got uh, another one. This is of our um, one of our old guys on the crew. He's just, I mean, gruff, rough neck. He's like sixty two years old, but he he acts like he's still twenties for yeah. sure. Um, I gotta show you this one. What is this? This is, this is his tool bag that he took on a service job. Is this just a bo- a beer box? It's a with Bud Light case with it? a bunch of wrenches, and and he went on a service call to someone's house with this. I'm like, oh I'm like what is what is that? He's like, oh, it's my toolbox. Like, my toolbox. <laughs> He's like, well, I didn't, I didn't have my my small toolbox with me, so I'm like, ah, fuck it, that'll work, that'll work. I wish I could have that seen the work. homeowner's face. Just oh, oh, it, <laughs> when oh, this guy classic. rolls up classic you want to just show me where it's at oh he's such <laughs> he's such a beauty such a beauty oh that's awesome yeah that's <laughs> all right <laughs> i uh so i uh i seen this guy on you might have even seen this dude before it was just something on like uh instagram right because you know like i you watch enough stuff it starts popping things in like that yeah 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 world right so like I'm always looking at like cooking stuff or whatever. And this mm-hmm. dude nonstop in, I, I don't subscribe or follow his stuff, but it's nonstop in my feed. This guy, his, uh, his handle is barfly seven, 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 seven. Incredible name. <laughs> Have you, I don't know if you've heard of this guy or whatever. This guy is enormous, ginormous <laughs> following. And <laughs> dude, you, you have to look this guy up. All he does is cooks the most disgusting fucking food <laughs> in a hotel bathroom. Oh, oh, I have seen this guy. <laughs> I have seen this guy. And it yes. is rugged. Oh. And people love it. Like, he's just, like, dumping raw meat onto the counter. Counter. In the bathroom. And, like, making burgers and shit. And, like, oh. mixing it. Like, oh. dude... It is the most disgusting thing that you cannot look away from. Yeah. Like, I, Sam, you have to look this guy up. Shout his it name is. back out again because I'm about to write it down. Yeah, it's called, it's Barfly. B-A-R-F-L-Y. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then 7777, so four sevens. <laughs> oh, it, it, that, it that is page is like rough. a car crash. It yeah. is, dude, but he's like you so said, big. you probably like can't look away. And if if his no. video pops up, you're not gonna like skip it. You're gonna well. Be here's like, the thing. I have to. I've see only this. seen this on Instagram. Like I, I don't do like TikTok and stuff. I have to imagine this guy is gonna be huge, enormous on TikTok because wow. all he posts is reels of this stuff. <laughs> oh. it, I'm telling you, dude, watch it for two minutes. And you will be absolutely hooked. And I don't even subscribe to it. I just like, it always pops up and I watch every time. Here's here's what I want to know. I want to know the backstory on this because clearly he does it now. It's got a lot of traction. It pe- grabs people's attention. He's he's blown up from it. But he started this, you know, without anyone watching it. And why did he start it? Why did he do it? Like, what's the backstory? Was he just... I don't- was he just renting hotel rooms and chefing it up in there because maybe his home There's life nothing chef, wasn't what dude. he wanted? <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing chefing about this. Just watch it for two seconds before you even like. <laughs> it's just. Uh, it's rancid. But like, and the dude is just like he looks like the guy you would yeah. think is doing this. Yeah. But he, put, I gotta <laughs> say, like I said, I'm like I'm invested at this point now because like, yeah, yeah. How could you not be? And he posted something semi recently that this is uh. And this maybe this is where it all started. Is there is a video of him like clean cut, like much younger, proposing to this woman on Jerry Springer <laughs> on the show. <laughs> like it's actually the guy <laughs> on the show. That's incredible. <laughs> oh my god! And I'm thinking maybe, yeah. maybe that's yep. that's just that led to this, dude. I don't know. The, the casters Same. on the show saw Damn, him. For I'm a telling you, like, dude. They're like, yes, this guy's yeah. gonna be a star. Yep. You're you cannot guy. look away. You can't. 
Like just, uh, <laughs> just look it up. Yeah. I, I, I'll, that's I'll do all it I right just, now. I'll just do it look right it up. Now. I, that's all there is to it. I I can't even describe. I can't even describe. But it, yeah, look him up on TikTok. I got to think it's massive. So shout out to that guy. Jeez. Oh, um, he's got 34. Th- oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, man. But, dude, I'm just. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you'll, you'll wonder what you're doing with your life once you see It's this in the guy. sink. Yes. It's in the bathroom sink. I know, dude. Yeah. I told you. Yes. <laughs> it's literally in a hotel. It's cutting these. So I mean, I'm ta- I'm taking notes if I ever go on the road again. This this True. man's genius. Yes, dude. You think like hotels are like it, like are they comping this guy a room now to come and like to do this there? nastiness in their hotel? Oh my I, gosh! Like it's or, it's or like he, holiday or, in like hey buddy, you know we got or he, you. Or he wears a disguise and he's like in and out because when they have to clean it up, they're like Jesus. Jeez, <laughs> dude, or like it gets big enough. He's like in Vegas in like some pen. Like they got yeah. like that's where this goes, right? Yeah, right. That's his. Yeah, <laughs> like he's he in like can... a super bougie hotel, just like yep. demolishing. Yep, it. orders has his mail order bride ready to go, and then gets <laughs> married on the scene, cooks up a fabulous meal for the night of. Oh god! Oh my gosh! You're okay, watching, I need to look you? away. You're right. I need to get off that. <laughs> I need it. There was. You'll be on. You'll be on it tonight. I it is it. something you can't look away because then you go to the next one. You're like, he's not doing that there. He's not. He's not. He is. He it's did gross. It. It's kind of gross, actually. He did but it. it's he's like, not going to fold like all that up together and then eat it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah. Dude, I, I had I, I messed up the other day because I was. I was doing some grade A people watching and I had some and I'm like in the moment I was even like, I need to remember this. And I absolutely <laughs> didn't. But, <laughs> oh my God. But hey, so you ever, uh, so I had, I typed this one in just so I would like, remember to like bring this up. But like, are you, you ever do this thing where you're like by yourself and like something happens that was like unreal. Yeah. And you're literally just like, you're like pissed that no one's there right now. Yeah. Like out yes. loud, you're like, that was did, sick. Did like, anyone see this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you ever have that? Yeah. Dude, because yeah. I had one I had one of those moments the other day and I was just like, What'd you do? Do you remember? Son it? Of a bitch. Huh? Do you remember what you did? Or you I just have no idea. Moments? I just vividly remember being like pissed <laughs> that no one saw what it was. I, I, I had one of those moments a couple days ago, dude. This is unbelievable. I'm I was like, I was tying a couple leader lines or doing whatever. And my boat is parked in the yard and I like had brought the scissors out from the boat. And like, you know how scissors come and go from boats and drift around and yes. whatever they like. And I was like, had in my head, I'm like, put it back in the boat, put it back in the boat, put it back in the boat. And I'm like flying around the yard. I am probably like four feet away from the boat at least. And I, and I do a lob and I lob the scissors into the boat and it sticks in the slot. Dude, where no. like, you yes, dude, I you yeah. swear to God, yeah. I would give anything from four feet away. You would never, it would, I'll never make the shot again. It was unbelievable. I went like that and I watched it go <laughs> right in. And I was like, I did it. <laughs> no one was there. It was just me. It was the most incredible thing I've done. In a long, See, but long then time. you tell people and everyone's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, it was unbelievable. Like, I'll never do it again. I know that for sure. Uh, You're like that shit should be on like ESPN, dude. That could have been dude perfect. It could have been anything. That yeah, it should have been top ten ESPN, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> that was yeah, that was less than a week ago. I should have wrote that down. No, it's in the phone. Damn. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I gotta start remembering that because it happens. And then you're kind of like, meh. But it yeah. was like oh, in the moment, you're just like, God, I'm the best. <laughs> there's so many there there's also so many good like people watching things like you said where like today i was just dry i just drove to get gas just a little bit ago and there's like this spillway dam by my house and like 100 yards away from the spillway dam there's just this little girl by herself ripping the front of her fishing pole in a puddle back and forth and back and forth <laughs> and the rod has just got to be just demolished grinding it in the road but you, do, you know you're just by yourself and you drive by and then you just kind of smile like. just just a glitch in the cpu like, <laughs> yeah, like look back it's fixed she's actually casting now yeah. <laughs> she wasn't even close to the water and she just found a puddle in the parking lot it was ripping her rod tip it's, it's like it's like the fucking truman show they're like I, I, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Girl number two. Girl number two. Get on it. Get on it. Get on it. Get on it. Yeah, know, it. That's what you think. Like you're driving. Like, is that for me? Is that for me? Just to get a smile out of me? Is <laughs> it work? Oh, you're so right, dude. <laughs> There's so many crazy things that happen all the time. Dude, I think TV. people watching is underrated. It is. Like, I could literally, if someone was like, what do you want to do today? I was like, I don't know. Let's just go somewhere with people and just look at them. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. It never fails. It's always good. I, I swear, like, the 100 people that I actually know real well are, like, the only people on this on the face of the earth. The rest of the people are just, like, <laughs> like w- robots or something. And then they every once in a while, they screw up, and they're running into walls, like, aimlessly. <laughs> Or like right? doing weird shit. And, and you like, catch it every now and again. And you're like, what? And then you never see it again. Yeah. Nope. nope. And that hmm. person. Yep. Hmm. Yep. Gone. Gone. Interesting. Here's, 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 a, we're not going to go on this tangent, but if we had to a little bit about kind of like the simulation thing, you know what I mean? Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> have you ever, like, have you ever seen your neighbors unload their groceries? Exactly. Have you no, ever never. seen an Asian woman pregnant? Uh, actually, in my high school, that was quite common. Okay. That's quite common. Honor's in on it. Yep. Have you ever seen uh, Asian people pump gas? No. Think about that. <laughs> Are they real? <laughs> nothing, nothing against them. I'm just saying, like, there's a bunch of, there's, like, I read this whole list the other day of, like, things you probably never seen, but I bet they've happened. There's people maybe, listening to Maybe this they have like, <laughs> yeah, no. you know what i mean like you just kind of think like oh my god now that i think about it i don't know if i've ever seen that i don't know if i've ever seen my neighbors yeah. unload their groceries any of them not even once no I they plug know. themselves in at night <laughs> I know, and i'm like yeah. they're charging <laughs> it is crazy it's wild dude god all right damn it. where, where <laughs> we are we can't. now we can't, we can't go down this road. We can't no. go down this road. We can't go down right, this road. All right, all right, all right. We're gonna, we're, let's change it up here because I know where this is going to go. All right. So we're going to – let's let's go uh, – let's let's get into the Twisted Fork here. We, we've done this segment now I think only one time, maybe tw- two times I think. Uh, awesome segment. Awesome and it, segment. It's gone over really well. Them. People seem to like it. Um, so – Oh, did he just bail? Where's he going? He doesn't like it that much. Dude, he's apparently. yeah, he's like super good. See so, ya. Yeah. He's been he's been peeing in the yard a little bit, I think, but he's back now. I think he has a bucket right. in there. Yeah, you just you just pissed it in the bucket or what? I got, I got a back door right there, and I just open it and shoot that back door. <laughs> that was just real dish. quick. Just made of plants. <laughs> real um, tasty. So, yeah, we'll, we'll just get into it. But, yeah, this segment, uh, if you didn't catch it the last couple times, has just been uh, some, like, unique uh, cooking experiences I've happened upon while I was uh, doing some experimentation or doing various things. So this one, uh, this one I actually I dedicated a trip to uh, to make this one happen. And uh, I need to do another one. So I, uh, I went on a trip specifically to Florida uh, nice. on a quest to acquire some iguanas. Nice. Uh, I, don't know if, I, don't, I don't know if I told any of you guys about this trip really ever. Pa- pause you real quick. Aren't they invasive in Florida and they, do they not have a limit? So, so they're invasive in a lot of places um, that they exist. Yeah. But they, uh, yeah, they're nasty little buggers, dude. And they, uh, especially in Florida, but there are other places in the world where they just run rampant. But uh, there's really no way to control them, per se. So, you know, people just like hunt them or whatever. And in Florida, there's basically, well, there's not a lot of rules in general in Florida. But like, just <laughs> like for these in, like invasives or whatever, they're kind of like, you can acquire them by any means that's deemed humane sure so it's not it's not like by florida standards or by like by you know, the florida rest of... standards yes mm. so there's nice. like a lot of different ways people get their hands on these okay like anywhere from uh like people building like you know those little like uh poles with little noose on the end that they catch like stray dogs with yes there's people like diy and these like mini uh iguana <laughs> noose snatchers poles. yeah yep um but like there's people blow gun like with like a string tied to it, like oh. blow gunning these things. That's and, way uh, popular, isn't it? 
it is it is, as it is now uh and like the the pellet gun thing has really taken off which i think is hilarious because it, like in florida they don't consider like a pellet gun like a, a firearm or like a gun we're like here like if there was somewhere you couldn't shoot guns you couldn't have a pellet gun there yeah it's not the same in florida like awesome. if you, you can have a pellet gun down. and so like there's people literally like in boats and like pellet guns now are like legit they're like rifles oh, yeah. Oh, yeah so there's guys literally just like trolling motoring down like a, a a cut like a residential cut with just like an ar pellet gun mm. <laughs> standing on the bow of the boat just like shooting iguanas off people's seawall yeah which is <laughs> sick <laughs> um so anyway i was like i wanted to like figure out how to do this because i was like i wasn't gonna like pay somewhere right to like go and like do it so i was like i want i want this like iguana meat because i think it's badass too i was like i just want to like do this because it looks cool yeah mm -hmm. so i was like a family trip that we were going down there but my parents were like driving and i was like, gonna fly down there because they rented like a whatever condo thing for like yeah. a week or something two weeks maybe and i was just coming for a while well they drove and they took like kayaks with like on their on their car or whatever but i told my old man i was like dude we got to bring a pellet gun down i was like i got it like i'm all in <laughs> like, we're, we're, we, we got to fit and i was like i don't even know where they live but i was like we gotta like figure it out because this was in uh fort like fort myers so uh golf side like halfway down florida yep and uh i did some like research that there were like some around there something you know like i don't know where or whatever but i i happened upon this dude that's like his business is just like killing iguanas <laughs> and i was awesome. like this is my guy. So I, of course I reach out to this dude and he was like super chill. Like he gave me his phone number and I like called him up and like, he told me like how to find him and like all this stuff. And then he's like, dude, I'm starting, I'm starting a business. And now he runs like a full, like a iguana outfitting business. That's incredible. Yeah. And he's like, are probably way good. <laughs> he's the real deal. And I was like, this is sick. So anyway, I go down there. We went fishing up this little river thing or whatever, and we paddled into this one cut, and there was, like, iguanas in all these trees. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, we've we've reached the promised land. <laughs> and we've already gone, like, probably a mile from, like, the, the truck. So I literally paddled all the way back up to the river because I had the pellet gun, like, in, in the truck. <laughs> paddled all the way back, got it, paddled back down there, and uh, proceeded to kill iguanas, <laughs> which was pretty sick. And, uh, so I, the, this, the one that I got like in this cut or whatever was like probably five feet long. Oh my gosh. Big bastard. And, uh, and I was like, I don't know. Now I don't know what to like do with it. Like I've never like dealt with this before. So I had like a little like cooler thing that I was like putting fish in that I was catching. So I just like stuffed this whole iguana in there. Oh like the God. tail was like poking out, you know, yeah. I was like, I felt very Florida about the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I brought it back, whatever. So we're staying at this condo and it was like definitely like somewhere it's just like an old people condo situation, sure. or, you know, and uh, it was right. It had a golf course and everything. So the condo we were on was like second floor right on the golf course. Like there's a green like right outside the window. And of course, it's Florida. So there's people golfing nonstop. Yep. And uh <laughs> you're out there with your I, bubble blade mm -hmm. I, I, but, I, I, I butchered it on the balcony of the condo like overlooking the golf course <laughs> did you hang it up to dry I, I had it I had it hanging up by the tail to skin it nice <laughs> nice so yeah and skinning an iguana was not super easy by the way if you, I, if, I can think not how they, like it explain it really quick how how you go about it okay so well so i i guess i like the actual process of it probably wasn't very different than skinning other like small game type animal but yeah. the skin is like uh like really t it's like leather but it's like uh i don't know like yeah it's real thick and like super rough and like jagged so it's kind of like a i guess like alligator but it's like small right where's the majority <laughs> of the meat where where where's the majority of the meat on an iguana uh, th well, the back legs are like unreal, like a lot of meat. That's they're super powerful in the back end. And then like the, the last like six or eight inches of the tail is like a baseball bat of meat. Really? Mm. Cause like they, al they alligator tail. Yeah. But like, cause they, they fight with their tail or whatever. 
So like the further down it you go, there's like it's just like bony and it's just like a jagged like whip because they use it to like beat each other yeah, up or whatever. Yeah. But like the lower part of it is really muscly, so there's like a lot of meat in there. But the back legs were like really loaded, and then they had uh, like a good like I mean the front you know the front legs like got some meat on too. But yeah, I would say like the majority is on the back. But there was like out of the one I got like a five footer, which I mean like the tail is like a lot of that length or whatever. But I probably got like you know maybe like three, three or four pounds of meat out of it. I'll say. Oh, that's wow. pretty dang good. That's though. pretty. Yeah, good. it was like pretty solid amount of meat. Um, and like the one that I got was, it was a big male one, but I guess like some of these dude, like people I've seen videos of like people, like they cut them open and they're just like loaded with eggs. They're like ping pong ball size eggs, like loaded. Like there's like 30 of them in there, but I, I didn't like, Did I didn't eat them. Dude, there's some shit on YouTube. I'll tell you. Oh. Like you're to, yeah. Bar but, uh, 5777 Motel 6. <laughs> Santa yeah. Bull Island. Down Can in you Florida. imagine some pickled iguana egg? I'm just saying, like, if I do it again, like, there's there might be more options, right? <laughs> but anyway, so I skin, I skin this thing. Literally, it was like, and there were, like, people, like, golfing, like, right there. Probably, like, what the fuck is, you know. And Florida, uh, man. Well, they, and I, I know they were pissed because they ended up, we ended up getting in trouble. Like we were, we were fishing in one of the ponds, like right behind the thing. Cause there was a bunch of tilapia in there. No, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll catch these up. Catch one of these. And, if, and then like somebody complained and we like got in trouble from the people. Cause they're like, you can't fish here. Cause there's like alligators or whatever. And I was like, okay, well, I just skinned an iguana on the back porch of this <laughs> thing and nobody said a damn thing. So, <laughs> but anyway, so I took, I took the meat from it and dude, I'm not going to lie. I made a decent amount of stuff with it and i highly recommend it really like, how'd you cook it so i did so i did like a couple different things like i like i said i had a few pounds of it to mess around with which is like a de- like if you're just playing around is like a good amount to have yeah because like it's not just like oh you make one thing and that's it but you get to so i took some of it and i like ground it up and i made it into like uh like burgers i did like some small like sliders that were really really yeah. good um it's super light light colored meat which i think is like if you've had like alligator somewhere yeah it's like pretty typical it's, it looks a lot like that kind of like a lighter color um but it's super uh has a very unique smell to it super sweet like by, by itself really like literally tastes like you weird. put sugar on the meat is what it tastes really? like weird. so and i thought it was weird so like when i obviously dug into this but yeah yeah, yeah. apparently they're like main the, so the reason there's such a like a problem in Florida is not just because like they like they make a mess because they shit all over everything, mm-hmm. but they uh, people don't like them because they their primary diet is flowers. So they like raid people's oh. these like people spend twenty k on their landscaping and these things just come and just eat all decimate the flowers. them. Yeah, so that's probably I'm assuming why they get that like real sweet flavor to them is they're just like eating flower like literally eating flowers. Yeah, so. Anyway, I messed around with that, uh, made some burgers with it. I took, I like c- made some tiny little chunks and I fried them. And I made these like uh, little tostadas, right? So a little like popcorn fried meat kind of thing with like a yeah. little bit of like taco thing, like salad thing on top of a, like a tostada shell, which was really, really good. And I, dude, I'm telling you, it's like nothing else I've had. Like I would say the closest thing to it is probably like alligator. That's like something people have like actually had. Like yeah, you, know, you go to the state fair and you're like, oh, get that. Yeah. Um, but dude, these some of these places I've been looking at, people are loading up on this meat, dude, big time. Really? So mm. like, remember I told you that guy that like contact, right? So yep. they want like they're doing this in places to just like get rid of the population of them. Yep. which I think is cool. Like I'm all about these like invasive species that you can like hunt and there's like very little rules or like limits or whatever. <laughs> like you're yeah. like, I'm trying to get some meat. Right. So this guy, they run a pretty serious operate. Like they do a little bit in Florida, but Puerto Rico is apparently where it's going down. If you want to go <laughs> like the guy, literally when I was asking him about it, he sent me a text message that just said, it's going down in Puerto Rico, figure out how to get here. No way. And I didn't even know this guy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did and I he... was like, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> so I, I started looking some of this stuff up, dude. 
and it looks out of control. And I think like collectively we should go on a group trip to do this. We just dry ice like 500 pounds. <laughs> they, 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 so, okay. If you're, if you're like about that, like I said, the meat's good. You can do a lot of stuff with it. I just like the experience of like getting it and like what it is, I think is like the crazy part about it. Right. Yeah. Cause mm-hmm. it's a, it's not like this crazy thing where it's like, you, Oh, you can only do certain things with it. Like it's good. Meat. Right. It's really good. But it's badass that it's like, it's very available and it's kind of a cool thing. So this, this, <laughs> this trip they run, dude, it's super cheap. It's like 150 bucks. So think about like being able to go and do anything guided for 150 yeah. bucks. Impossible. You show up there and you just jump in Jeeps and they just drive around <laughs> in like the jungle or whatever the hell they have in Puerto Rico. And they just drive around with these like souped up 22 air rifles and just decimate these things. And they're all huge. They're like five, six foot iguanas. And these people are piling them up, dude. Oh my like a hundred a day. Oh my <laughs> Just gosh. ripping around in Jeeps in the <laughs> in the goddamn place. That would probably be the most expensive part of just getting to Puerto Rico. And then once you're there, it's going to be a lot. But of- it's not, dude. Because like people aren't going there, really. That's true. Like you can go there for cheap. And this thing is cheap. But yeah, like these people just want them gone. Like even in Florida, it's like, I think it's pretty reasonable to go do it. But like I said, I just went DIY and like did it. Yeah. Like I think, and the further south you go, the more wild it is. Like I think Fort Myers is like pretty far north of where it is. But like, if you just wanted to go down, like, I guess the keys is absolutely loaded with them. <laughs> so I I don't know. I guess I haven't like dug into that. But yeah, like anything like in that West Palm Beach area and south is just stupid with, with these iguanas. But yeah, dude, like uh if you ever get the chance to like eat it, I would. But also if you ever get the chance to go mow a bunch of them down, I would do that too. <laughs> and like eat them because it was it was awesome, dude. But yeah, super good meat. I'm bummed that I don't have any right now because I wanted to like make something else like right before we did this one. But yeah, yeah. But I didn't. So that's that's I, a good twisted fork, Rye. That's a good twisted fork. I like yeah. it. And we got we got a bunch of good ones in the hopper too coming up that I actually do have currently. So I think we'll I like, like as we go forward, I will make, I will make what it is right before this and it's, it'll be, it'll be legit. I'll send it to you guys. I'll, I'll make the noises. Like I'm actually eating it. Mm. I like that. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Drum. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, I come think- on. You're from Wisconsin. At one point, your your ancestors grabbed a hunk of cheese and just deep fried it. And then everyone was like, oh, oh. ice cream. So good. Mm. Ice cream. So good. Mm. All right. Well, that's what I had for that. But it was it was solid. So anyway, iguana meat on the menu, boys. Um. All right. So we're going to get into a little bit of a story time here. And I know these ones always run a little bit long. So, Sobe, I want you to, I want you to get into this a little bit. You got you got a good story. Um, okay. We're okay. Oh boy, taking a big I, swing. I, I don't Everybody think gather around. I don't think we've told this on past the bar before. I don't I don't know if we've ever told this because I don't think uh, we've only ever done one podcast together, right, Hunter? Yeah. You and I yep, together. Okay. One. So we'll just, if we can, if we can go to the second part of the story, cool. If not, we'll bank it somewhere else, but. Oh no, we'll just, we're all in. Mm-hmm. We'll just caption the top of this story time as Sturgeon Bay shenanigans. <laughs> okay. Oh. And, and we'll, we'll lead into we've, the story. We've definitely by saying, not told this. <laughs> Cody and I were out there fishing the Sturgeon Bay open, very prestigious bass tournament, very prestigious smallmouth tournament. Some of the best smallmouth hammers in the world come out and fish this tournament there's elite series pros there's canadian hammers there's midwest gurus everybody gathers around to capture these smallmouth but what happens after the sturgeon bay open and just what happens at sturgeon bay during certain time of years we could call it a bug hatch per se just like the stars align and and, you know things crawl out of the woodworks that you, you wouldn't usually see uh, that's where we'll lead into the story. So Cody and I, we've just been battling the elements of, you know, the Great Lakes for quite some time now. He's, you know, stress fractured his extremely expensive boat. We've been fighting the waves. We caught some smallmouth. We didn't finish super high, but we we crushed some big smallies. 
Um, and we're staying with good buddy Spencer Samplowski, kind of at his parents' place and at his shop. And, you know, post-tournament, we decide to go out on the town. Spencer doesn't have to guide. Cody and I are still in town for the day, and we're going to go hit up the local tavern. And like you should remember, Sturgeon Bay and kind of that whole area there, it's, you know, it's a, a touristy, a touristy town. So on off weekends here or there, there's a lot of just riffraff that comes to town. And, and we go to this tiny little dive bar. Well, do you remember the name of the place? Oh, I remember the people in it. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> That's the name what matters. We go to this tiny little place, and and we're just a bunch of just greasy fishermen. We have just fished Sturgeon Bay open, just smell like armpit. And as we walk in, there's like two bachelorette parties happening at the same exact time, <laughs> and then everyone else in there seems to be like you know, thirty five year old to forty year old women. And we're the only three guys in the whole place. Only perfect three men. Storm. Only perfect three men. Storm is we're brewing. just like, be- you know, if any of you fishermen have been to a bar before, especially in the middle of nowhere, you know, this, this happens never. This happens absolutely never. And as we order our first drink, the front doors open again. And another oh, bachelorette there. party rolls in right behind it. <laughs> and we kind of all look at each other, like, as if we were in the twilight zone, like, this is just spooky. Okay. I, I, I will say one thing leads to another. And the next thing you know, these these 40-year-old mothers, who I don't know if they're part of the bachelorette party, they might have just been some others that had rolled in. It was a spooky night. They've got Cody lifted onto the bar, and they're doing body shots off of him. And every bachelorette party in there is just chanting and chanting and screaming. And like I said, we're the only three guys there, and I'll, I'll let Cody take it from there. And this, and this is like, oh, you're gonna let me take it from there. This is peak Connor, right? Yeah, yeah, peak oh, absolutely. performance Connor, right here. Yeah. This is uh, demon mode time, Connor. This is me uh, on performance, crawl. performance mm-hmm. mode. Yeah, he was in performance mode. He was. There is no doubt in my mind that with with free drinks and tips that he was conjured into this for a work trip. i was contracted out (laughs) yeah you know (laughs) okay i don't know how far you want to take this one sam so i'm gonna let you continue (laughs) you can and i will let's jump in in. well i know we went to that bar because there was and sam i'm gonna look directly in your eyes and you can say whatever you want to say because we knew who the bartender was that night yes yeah and that's all I'm going to say. Maybe it'll jog a memory. But <laughs> who was it, Sam? A friend of Cody's, I would, I would assume. <laughs> Not at that time. No. Not at that time. <laughs> Not at that time. You two knew, you two knew her. And you were, ex- and I remember Spencer was excited, excited to get there. It's like, oh, I wonder if she's working. I wonder if she's working. Oh, she's working. I'm like, hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Sam, take it away because. <laughs> and it was just. There's a lot of ways it, this can go. It could go. It could go <laughs> deeper. It could go shallower. But like always after a fishing tournament, it seems like there's a meeting of the minds. Whether you did good, bad or indifferent, you know, a meeting of the minds of of greasy anglers will gather together. And we just happened upon an anomaly where we were the only three fishermen in there. And there was the just, ratio, the ratio could not have been higher. It'll never, it'll never it be will, that way again. It was a moment. It was a moment. There was a blood moon rising yes, yes, at yes. the same time. Every and bite all, window opened up. It had up. to be. It had yeah. to be. There, you know, tubes down there all flickered and yeah. a light bulb went off saying. It you is picture time. every dough goes into heat and then some large family did a drive and killed every other buck in the area and we were the last ones we were the landing la- we had two spikes and a fork lip waiting curled. yeah <laughs> and we are the last we are the last men on earth i will say in I, Sturgeon Bay. I, we've never been at least me personally i've never been bombarded with women like we were there it was almost it was just insane and like i said cody was on the bar they were doing body shots of him there was chanting like you'd hear it like you know a high school softball game happening. 
And it was really, it was a moment and it was bliss. And that was, that might be as far as we take it here on the podcast. We, we might start a Patreon where you could hear the rest of the story from there, but it, it's just. You're going to have it, to pay to get into this one yeah, and, write, it, and sign your name on a disclosure because it, uh, it gets, it, how do you, it, what's it, the it, word for this? Yeah. I don't know where we went after that. We might, we might've hit a couple other places, but. It was really just the pure bliss of, of being in Sturgeon Bay when the new moon hits the minor and every muskie was on the same point, right? There was <laughs> there was a big moment in there where we had to uh, convince to actually go back to that place. Yeah. Do you remember that? Por- we we had to Sam? convince Spencer. Yeah, let's yeah. give the people a taste here because, I mean, I, I – I know some of the details of this story that probably shouldn't be disclosed on this podcast, but you know, give give the people a little, give a little something here. Big swig, big swig, big swig. You, you take it. You oh, take it. Or I've, I've built the set. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. So at this point, we're all having a good time with what seems to be a harem of women for yeah. all of us. It, like we're chatting, having a good time, playing games, and uh, out of nowhere, someone got very, very upset with what someone must have said to said person, and said person drove us to said bar. In fact, it got it was someone was so upset that the music shut down because said person was screaming at the top of his lungs, <laughs> "Sam, we're." fucking leaving now <laughs> and we had to detach ourselves from the the shirt pulling and uh <laughs> distractions in front of us and i looked at sam he looked at me he's like trust me cody we're coming back i got this i'm like sam you better get this fucker figured out <laughs> you better get this figured out you're not ruining this night for us don't take this from me don't <laughs> we've had a lake for four from days me. this is our first days of civilization we are coming back this is puerto vallarta spring break <laughs> in sturgeon bay in may don't ruin this it. screw <laughs> sandals mexico we've made it <laughs> we are in the promised land. I can die tonight. <laughs> it's a good night. It's a good group of guys here. We're all gonna die together. <laughs> so I'm in the back seat. Someone must have been denied, or like someone said something to him. And I'm texting Sam in the back seat. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? And you're like, I got this. I got this. I got this. And you are putting on the Sam schmooze. The Sam schmooze doing whatever in your power to get that truck to turn back around. And I don't know exactly what you said or what you had to do to bring this person's spirit up, compliment, encourage, pat on the back. We're going back in and we're finding the one for you. We're your wingman now. Yeah, we and got I'm, you, brother. We, we got you, dude. We got you. That truck turns around. Sam did it. And I What is the I, moment of this U-turn feeling like? I am in the back seat just texting Sam. I'm like, I don't know how you did this. You should be a therapist. It was you a five-point turn on a country road. And as it happened slow, we were just like, keep it This going. is it, boys. This is it. This is the big one. Looking this at the rear view mirror. <laughs> So we end up going back to this bar. Same amount of women are still there. Still noses in the air, feeling the feel. They are ready. They are, their friends are getting married. They want to get married. They want to settle down. People are feeling it. There's love in the air. (laughs) True love, boys. I want to say it took another 20 minutes and we had another massive spat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We had another mental breakdown where the music cut, the bartender stopped pouring drinks. People are looking around. Why, why is, why is get low off of the boom box? What, what is happening this time? He's serious, serious. He's like, if you're not coming back, you're not fucking staying at my house. I'm fucking leaving you here. You find your own fucking way home. And I looked at Sam and I'm like, 
looking around. <laughs> and I think I mentioned to you, I'm like, we can find a ride. <laughs> we, <laughs> we can do this. <laughs> and we're, we, mind you, we are an hour. We're like 45 minutes yeah. to an hour away from the house. We've like, made a short jaunt per se. <laughs> don't worry about it, dude. We, we can find a way home. Look at all the prospects. <laughs> <laughs> we found a way home. We found a ride. <laughs> did we? Sam, take it away. Sam, take it away. Did we or did we go back in the truck? Sam uh -oh. blacked out. <laughs> I think we may have gone back in the truck twice and someone dropped us off. Dropped us. No, no, no. I was I getting pretty black at that point. We stayed. Stayed there. Danced our asses off. Yeah. I think... Maybe potentially another body shot. Another, yeah. Uh, dance with the bride. Um, and then we ended up, we did get a couple uh, rides from. Did we? Yes. 100%. 100%. Back to, I can, back to your boat. I, back to, back to uh, ca the casa. Yeah. Sukasa. Not Sukasa. Uh, wow. I don't, I don't know how you say he, his, his house. Uh, yeah, at about four in the morning when they finally <laughs> shut it down. We I, rode with. Uh, I love that you don't I even recollect say, this. And I'm, I not be, say, and I'm not being funny. To be I'm funny. not being funny. I'm, this is. We rode back. Oh, I want to say it was it was four women who were down in south of Sturgeon Bay, and they gave us a ride up there. North. North to Egg <laughs> Harbor. Nice. <laughs> and drove all the way back. <laughs> Hammered. As we're sitting in the back seat, thank, excellent. Thank you for the Uber ride. Sitting in the sitting in the back seat, yeah. Thank you for the right. Uber ride from right. whoever. Right, right, yes. And once we're Correct. done, Correct. Once, <laughs> once we're we're done off this podcast, I'll, I'll Correct. tell you a little bit more yeah. of the story. Oh but, wow! <laughs> but that, that that would be Sturgeon Bay. That is Sturgeon Bay during a bug hatch per se, and that and that was the story I wanted to tell. I've got I've got some awesome videos of Cody entertaining these gals as they're up on a girl's weekend and it's just well, it, it was it was bliss you know I mean, from, it, it was bliss. decade you know i mean from bass tournament a, incredible ratio there's no chippendale up there they gotta find a place they gotta find a spot it just happened to be the you know the rusty anchor saloon or whatever the fuck we call it i, I don't i don't know i don't know <laughs> incredible sometimes you just you don't question these things yeah you know it was, just, it was a blood moon. It was a blood moon. It was blood. You just got to live. Moon. It. Yep. I'm proud of you, boys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Am. We all Here came am. away with numbers that night, except maybe one person. But <laughs> meaning, <laughs> uh, I I, I want to say, yeah, it, uh, we we finished top forty, but we really feel like we finished top ten after that. <laughs> I mean, we we all finished top three that night. <laughs> <laughs> We were top one, two, and three. And where the other competitors were at, we'll never know. I'm like, how did they not sniff this out? We were, we were, yeah. It's just meant to be, boys. Do, do we have more time for more Sturgeon Bay shenanigans? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Well, let's I, do it. I don't know why. I'm, I went to college in Wisconsin, uh, but never spent a ton, a ton of time there besides visiting buddies, fishing, stuff like that. But there's this special spot, which we had already talked about with Sturgeon Bay where just shenanigans happens there. And it just seems it's nuts. So there's stories like that with Hunter. And then I got other stories where I'll be out there and we were deer hunting with some buddies and we were staying at their apartment and these were locals and we had met the rest of the locals at this local bowling alley. And, and we went down there bowling after, I think we did some fishing and hunting and yep. some filming and whatever. And we met the rest of the locals and, and, you know, right away kind of had to warm up to them. And they're kind of like, you know, cause we're like kind of tourists. We weren't there during tour season, but they could just tell we we're like tourists to the air. Smell it on you. They could smell it. Here. <laughs> so after a few games of just some horrible bowling uh, and a wristband night at the bowling alley, which is incredible, by the way, I think it was, you, you paid $12 and it was all you could drink forever in eternity at the bowling <laughs> alley. We befriended these locals. And after like, you know, like I said, three hours, one of them says, you know, well, where are you guys doing tonight? And I was like, well, you're looking at it. And he's like, well, where are you staying? And I'm like, we're staying with these other buddies up at these apartment buildings. Oh, you're staying with him. I know him. 
You know, my dad owns a go-kart track right next to his apartment building. I was like, you don't say. <laughs> and he's like, we should all go. <laughs> we should mind, go. mind you, the bowling alley's closing wristband night, which is like 1230 at night. And, and we're all like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so this pack of 12 guys, some new friends, some old, we, we stumble up to this go-kart track, you know, half in the bag because we had already figured we were going to walk home anyways this is another fishing trip where the best parts happened after fishing yep and he proceeds to pull out his keychain and just opens up the whole gates to this go-kart track <laughs> <laughs> and it was like i'm telling you if there was another kids in a candy store and then old kids in a candy store imagine a bunch of 20 year olds <laughs> pissed rocket loaded with cold <laughs> beers behind the wheel in a very just safe setting of go <laughs> so absolutely eight. and then it starts to rain and the track gets slippery and we're getting full of mud and we're drifting and we're nailing each other like anything you could ever do never on a go-kart track we were doing it because his family owned it and it was it was the most incredible experience of my entire life at this search big go-kart track at, at one in the morning it was unbelievable. That's awesome. Yeah. Full force. Imagine putting your pedal to the floor behind the wheel of a moving vehicle and you just knew you were safe. You know, you're not like driving in the streets. You're not endangering anyone. This is give just... that man some keys. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing will go wrong. <laughs> we should all go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you shall. Yeah. So that's kind of the short version of, of what happened that night. But it was just, it was incredible. And everything that happens after these these great lakes trips off the water or out of the woods is just really it's, it's kind of where the magic it. happens yeah sturgeon bay is a beautiful place <laughs> it, is. it really <laughs> is oh yes. my gosh yes god damn so when you go by monaco golf course or monaco go-kart course or, or sturgeon bay or wherever <laughs> tourist attraction is just know somebody owns that and they've been driving on it after, and they, and they have, and they have the keys, <laughs> and they have the keys. Pursue them, find them, and do it. <laughs> it's a good goal. It's a good goal, everyone. Oh. That, sh that should be a goal. <laughs> Incredible. That's good, dude. Man. God damn. Dude, oh we got man. Oh, we yeah. One of these days, we got it. We got to dig into a couple of these. I mean, I think we've talked about it on here, but we all went to college together. Yeah. And I don't think that we've exploited that to its fullest extent yet. <laughs> we, we will do. We will do that. Yeah, uh, on, especially on another night when Bart's not on here, where we can tell <laughs> real, he's not. For any problem. listeners at home, oh, Cody, boy. Ryan, and myself, we all fished for the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, and we were the coolest fishing team in the entire world. Right before college 100, fishing really grew, and, it, and it, we're not even just saying that. Yeah, we're not saying it's that. We factual. were the coolest. And, and this was the wild west of of college fishing. There's no boat captains. There was no coaches. This there's no more. Before it got like formal. Yeah, we, it was the wild west of, of college fishing, and and we really, I think we were we, the last. We, we were the last. We were yeah, the last we cowboys. Were, and it was. We had a good hand in making it the wild west oh, as well. Yes, we did. I mean, yes, there's there's like a lot of reasons that you know they do things the way they do now. We were Hank Weldon's <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> I assume a rule or maybe 10 was made after us. And we've got stories yeah. like that in the pipe. So like, like we always say, if you're a new listener or old listener, you got to tune back in because it's just getting started. We it just really let the match. The fire's oh not even gosh. rolling yet. Yeah. And then we, we can't, we can't even get into it right now. We oh can't. man. We can't. Those college stories, the classic stories, tur <laughs> just tournament stories in general. There's oh. a lot. There really is. But I, oh. dude, I, th I think we got, we got to end it here. Or yeah. we're gonna we're gonna yeah. till tomorrow. So uh I want yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in to another episode of Pass the Barb. This was a fun one. And uh yeah, we got a lot of stories coming that uh, I think we're just we're we're just getting we're just heating up. We're just getting we're just heating up. We can't we can't give you all the you know, we can't give away the best ones so early yeah. here. So we'll uh we'll come back to you with some more stuff. But like I said, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, if you haven't yet, please share, rate, subscribe this podcast, and uh, let's get this thing huge. Let's do it. Let's pass Pass the barb. Pass the barb. Ryan, you are not going to believe the ending of this story. We'll see you guys. Wait. <laughs> wait. Wait. <laughs>